Nataliwa sa inyong pagkagahi? Kabaga? Kagold? How I wish na kundad unti ka sa atubangan sa mga bayaning revolusyonaryo. Ang tanan mong mga apan kay ilupad kuyo sa mga apan-apan. Sama sa mga hero, hunk, o shofo nga sad ka, mausayang kung tili ni mo maamuhan. It's your loss kung ang ilami kong alinutuan, tili ni mo matilawan. Sorry ka ayaw kong isulihan ni ka. O sa kaki mo karoon na sulayan, Nagamito ni mong kapright, kautukan, abrihon ni mong mata, dunggan, uplukan, aron ni mong kung makuyukan. Subayon ta ang dalan padulong sa kagawasan, hangtod nga ang ni mong kasing-kasing, musabay pagpitik ni akong dugan. Dayon, mag-uban ta og hakup sa bulawan ng ani, manglupad o banspanon sa mga langgam. Likayan, piyaan ang tagkahi o kapugnaw, gakson ang kahumok sa hangin, hakan ang kainit sa adlaw. Hindi ko na may natun. Hindi ko na rin mo tanda. Hindi ko na mabubiya. Mabiyaan sa mga anak. Nag-story yan naman tanay, di ba? Wala naman ni Nato. Oh 
Malipayong pagsaulog sa buwan sa kababayinan. Happy National Women's Month. Pamgrass, the Cebu Heritage Hotel, in partnership with the National Historical Commission of the Philippines, the National Quincentennial Committee, Museo Sugbo, the Central Visayas Association of Museums, the Andy Heritage Center, SOAN 2020, and the Culture, Arts, and Design Association of the Philippines Foundation Incorporated, present to you a celebration of the National Women's Month and the International Women's Day. This hybrid event, Women Warriors in the Visayas, Visayan Women Heroes in Pre-Colonial, Colonial, and Contemporary Times. We request everyone at our on-site venue to please stand for the Philippine National Anthem to be led by the Honkera Street Children's Choir. We Cebuanos aspire to be worthy in following the path taken by our heroes in their fearless fight for a land whose sun and stars forever shine for justice, whose loving embrace is everyone's paradise. We strive to become a people who love our motherland in our every breath, and with every drop of our blood, sweat, and tears. Salamat to the Honkera Street Children's Choir for that beautiful performance of the Philippine National Anthem dedicated to our country and to Cebu and the Visayas and, uh, and for, for a better future for everyone. So today is a celebration. This month, we are celebrating the National Women's Month. And last March 8th, 
We celebrated also the International Women's Day. That's why we have this event today, the Women Warriors in the Visayas, to get to know more uh, about the women heroes in the Visayas from pre-colonial, colonial, and contemporary times. We are so happy that you are with us once again in our event. And we, we would like to recognize our, our uh, online participants, our online audience from the National Queen Centennial Committee page. Uh, maayong hapon. Good afternoon to Fami, Ali, Makadato, to M MJ, to um, May Joy, and also to those at the... At the um, at the Pamgras de Cebu Heritage Hotel page. Um, maayong hapon to Ryan Makasero of Rappler. We also say good afternoon. Uh, Andy says good afternoon. Uh, Ferdi Apartisio from Tagig Pateros. Um, tumutunghay mula sa sangay ng paaralan sa lungsod ng Tagig at bayan ng Pateros. Also to Tin Aprong Postrado from the West Visayas State University. Um, and also to our actor in one of our videos, Noel Crucio, who played the, the husband of Katipunera, Can, uh, Juliana Revilles. He played the character, the role of Candido Padilla, a Katipunero. Also at the National Quincentennial Committee page, Angie Carballo, Maayong Hapon. So we would like to recognize, we would like to thank our partners in this afternoon's event the National Historical Commission in the Philippines, the National Quincentennial Committee, Museo Sugbo, Central Visayas Association of Museums, the Andy Heritage Center, SOAN 2020, and the Kadafi or the Culture, uh, and Art, uh, Culture, Arts, and Design Association of the Philippines Foundation. So, of course, we have a celebration this month of the National Women's Month. So, we are going to trace the, 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 the history of women leadership in in the Visayas from pre-colonial until today, pre-colonial times until contemporary times. So we we would like also to thank those who registered online in our event. We also have, we thank also the on-site audience. Daghang salamat for being with us. We have fierce women warriors in, in our event today, also men who are in solidarity with women in this celebration. Dagang salamat. And also, we would like to, to greet all women. We, we greet all the women in our country, in the world. I would like to greet my mother, my grandmothers, my sister, my uh, women friends, all women in our community. Uh, happy a happy, a happy National Women's Month. We look forward to the month or to the future when everyone would be celebrating all women, regardless of color, class, uh, would be celebrating happiness. So we thank our technical team, of, even if most are men who are in solidarity helping us in this celebration helping us to make this celebration a success so th they are men but they have hearts for women that's why they're helping us <laughs> so so we would like to thank those um online audience we would like to to thank the those who registered and who who signify that they are from these institutions from the from the west visaya state university from the University of San Carlos, Cebu Normal University, from Aklan Catholic College, from Biliran Province State, State University, Kapisana ng mga guro at mag-aaral sa Filipino, from San Beda College, Alabang, from DepEd Schools Division of Taguig City. So uh, we also, and Pateros, we also thank the Kathara Filipino Indigenous Art Society. So this is a Visayan culture group uh, based in Canada. Daghang salamat for joining us. And we also thank uh, someone from one from Radio Pilipina Cebu. So Angie Carballo says from the National Quincentennial Committee page, she says, Happy Women's Month. And also um, Silda Bacanto, good afternoon, Satanan. Uh, Silda says, Happy Women's Month celebration. Satanan nga kagaba kababaihan dira sa Visayas kag sa bilog nga kalibutan. So daghang salamat Silda for the greetings. 
And also, Noel Crucio says, good afternoon from Talisay. So from Talisay, City, Cebu. And uh, so, dagang salamat. So if, uh, please do write hashtag, hashtag Visayan Women Warriors or National Women's Month or International Women's Day or uh, to celebrate this day. So we are celebrating this day, this month, by learning more and tracing the, the journey of the women, of the Visayan women throughout history and its relevance today to the women today, to the people today. So we also have one of our highlights of our, this afternoon's event is our cos Visayan Women Warriors Cosplay Contest uh, joined by six fierce and beautiful and um, women of substance who are who are they are joining our our women are they are uh, Cebuano youth uh, women youth <laughs> who are celebrating with us through a cosplay contest so they are play they are they are wearing the costume or they are playing the characters of their favorite women warriors in history of of the Visayas. So we would now like, uh, are we ready? Do we have our music for them to, to, we would like you to see them, but they would be answering, they would be explaining their character later after the panel discussion. So we would like to, do we have con cosplayers, the cosplayers now in our Visayan Women Warrior cosplay contest? Can we have them? Can, can they walk the runway? So first, if we have, so we have the music. So um, presenting to you um, a glimpse. Let's have a glimpse of our cosplayer. So this is not, uh, do they have numbers? Do they have numbers? So cosplayer number one. Do we have the cosplayer number one? Wala pa? So cosplayer number two. We have, we have Charlene. So we have Charlene uh, Teresa Magbanwa. Microphone. So we have Teresa Magbanwa, uh, played by uh, Charlene, our cosplayer number two. Mayong hapon sa tanan, ako si Teresa Magbanwa, ang hinirala sa panay. Let's give her a pakpak. <laughs> Mamakpak sa ta. So, uh, so we have uh, Sha cosplayer, that was cosplayer number two, Charlene, playing uh, Teresa Magbanwa, the Generala of Panay. So we have cosplayer number three, Shari, playing the Babaylan. Maayong hapon sa tanan. Ako si Shari, ang babaylan sa Mambaling. Daghang salamat. Daghang salamat, uh, Shari. Now we have cosplayer number four. We have uh, Maria Fe playing Cebuana Katipunera, Juliana Rebilles. Sa tanan, ako si Juliana Hilabellias, ang katapanera sa Dulhom. Daghang salamat. Daghang salamat, Maria Fe. So playing the katipunera of Dulho, um, Juliana Rebilias. So we have our cosplayer number five. So we have um, 
we have Mabel playing Amaya. Mayong hapon sa tanan. Ako si Mabel nga nagpresentar sa Amaya sa Cebu. Daghang salamat, Mabel. So we have our cosplayer number six. So we have Lenji uh, playing Biniaan. Mayong hapon ka ninyong tanan. Ako dahil si Lenji Mopon, Gaporteriani, Biniaan. Daghang salamat, Leji. So we have, so th those are our women warriors from the Vis in the Visayas, our cosplayers in our Visayan Women Warrior Cosplay Contest. So um, we we are so happy that they have played their favorite women warriors, their characters in Visayan history. So we have and folklore, Visayan history and folklore. So. Um, they would be explaining their characters in a while after our panel discussion. So we're so happy that that they are with us this afternoon, celebrating with us the National Women's Day and tracing Visayan history, the, the fearless women warriors in history through their costume play, through their costumes. So um, everyone, those who, we also have an audience who is also in a costume. So, what is the, your costume? Are you Babaylan? Or <laughs> so, Dagan Salamat, what's your name? Kokoy. So, we have Kokoy with us, uh, who, is a, who is one of our women audience right now. So, our, our, are our panelists already around? So, um, first, I would like to introduce to you our... Um, Panelists from the University of the Philippines, as University of the Philippines Cebu. She was form, formerly the lead role. Uh, he, she had the lead role in establishing the Sidlac Gender Gender Resource Center in Central Visayas. She is a retired associate professor of the political science and development and gender studies at the University of the Philippines, UP Cebu. She was formerly the chairperson, the, formerly the chair, she was the former chair of the Philippine Commission of Women. I am so proud and honored to have with us, to have with me, to be amidst these gender scholars, these women warrior scholars. And I'm so proud that she is with us today. She was my teacher in history in college, and she molded us, she molded us and taught us to love history, to learn about our history, and to relate this, to connect history to what is happening today in, in, in our society. Please help me welcome Dr. Rodora Bukoy. Doctor. Good afternoon. Happy to be part of your celebration, focusing on uh, women in the revolution of the, the Visayas. Mayang hapon sa tanan. Daghang salamat, uh, Dr. Dora, Dr. Duray. So I, I was always, I was telling Dr. Duray that people would ask me because my if, if my course was history, and I would always tell them that I am, my course is not history, but why is it that I talk mostly about history? And why is it that at Palmgrass, we have we have history at almost all corners, almost all floors. We name our dishes, drinks, our floors, our rooms, um, in honor of heroes of our Cebuano heroes. So I would always I, I wanted to tell those who would ask me, I am not a graduate of history, but I have brilliant history teachers who molded us and taught us that. We should learn. History is very important. We need to learn about our past for us to be able to have, to chart the right path to our future. So we cannot have a, 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 a beautiful future ahead of us if you do not learn from our history. We should learn from our history. So we thank, I thank my 
history teacher, history one teacher, Dr. Rodora Bukoy, for, for her lessons in history. So also, I am so happy also that to, to introduce to you our next panelist. She is also one of the women warrior scholars in the Visayas. She, 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 she was formerly the director of the UP Visayas Gender and Development Program. She was Dean of Students of the University of the Philippines Visayas. She is currently the member of the National Pool of Trainers of the Philippine Commission on Women, Sereptimist International of Iloilo, the National Network of Women in Fisheries in the Philippines and UGSAD Regional Gender Resource Network. And she has studied about, she with other women in Western Visayas in Panay have Research and have and have written about the women in history from pre-colonial times until contemporary times. So they have an extensive research, and I'm so proud that she did this. And I'm so proud to introduce to you. I'm so honored that she is with us this afternoon from the university. She was formerly a professor at the University of the Philippines Visayas, Dr. Rosario Asong, Dr. Rose. Yes. Okay. Good afternoon. Happy Women's Month. It's an honor to be with you this afternoon. And I'm really proud to say that I have at least made my own contribution with Tita Torio in coming up with a list, a roster of women from Panay who have done so much from the pre period up to the contemporary period. So thank you for the invitation. Daging salamat, Dr. Rose. So um, I'm sure you're so excited to hear their sharing about what they know about um, the history of women in the Visayas. So we would invite you to give your comments and give your questions as we go along because we would be immediately giving them your question. So all of us are in purple and purple is the color of women. We would be asking them later, why is it that purple is the color of women? So um, so we would like to um, invite you to um, give your question. So we have Lyndon Johnson. Um, um, uh, Lyndon Johnson says, hello po, Dr. Rodora, kapangalan po ninyo ang ate ko. So uh, Lyndon says that her, his sister has the same name as her, uh, Dr. Bukoy. So Christina Leona Mabesa from the National Quincentennial Committee page says, Good afternoon. So now we would we would be um, we would be starting our questions. We are asking our panelists some questions, and then we would be also showing you later. Stay tuned for our our um, videos on music songs we made for the women in uh, women heroes in Cebu, and also we would like to invite you to listen carefully to the to the sharing from our our panelists because there will be a trivia quiz with exciting prizes uh, in a while so after the discussion there will be a fun trivia quiz and also we would also like you to cheer for our cosplayers playing the visayan women warriors so so now we would like to to call first our um our panelists from the University of the Philippines, Cebu. She was formerly uh, my teacher, my my history teacher and, and a teacher of political science. So she was formerly the chair of the Philippine Commission on Women. Uh, please help me welcome again, Dr. Durai Bukoy. So Dr. Dr. Am Durai. I in? Uh, Hello. Okay. Yes, you are. So, Dr. Durai, please, add, it's okay now not to stop your camera because our team here would be the one to, to remove you or to add you to the screen. So, Dr. Durai, so we would like to ask you why, before I would ask you this question, why are women, I'm asking already, I'm already asking this question, why are women seemingly invisible in national and local history? But before that, please answer the question, why is why are you why are we wearing purple today? Why is purple the color of women? Oh, there are many reasons why violet or purple is used as symbol of the women's month celebration. 
first it is related to women's sexuality uh, one 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 reason given when we meet as feminists that uh, the the vagina which is uh the very heart of woman has this purplish color and it is through the vagina that that uh the the baby passes through when they when they are born in this world so it's a symbol of life a symbol of strength that's purple so that's what i learned maybe there are other reasons that rose could add <laughs> Dr. Durai, is it? I, I, I guess I read somewhere that it, be, it, the color is purple when the woman has is in is pleasured, or <laughs> is it, is I that? Said, it's related yeah. to the women's sexuality, and it's a symbol of yes. life. It's yes. a symbol of. Uh, when, it's a very important part of humanity and human biology. Yeah. So that's the color, but so maybe there are the, other reasons, but. We have not really tackled this very extensively in our kapihan ng mga Okay. So now, Dr. Duray, please tell us, why is it that women are seemingly invisible in national and local history? The very way women are invisible or hindi nakikita is because much of historical writings have focused on men. Precisely because um, the, the, the historians or those who have been writing about the political history of the country primarily are these are male scholars. So that, that's one reason given by, by a lot of feminist historians. The women are invisible because and marginalized in historical writings primarily because one, um, males are the ones writing about our history. It's, so there is masculinist bias in the history. The other one, in fairness to the men also, um, the men, uh, the one that's focused are often um, military, political, as well as diplomatic developments where women are not into. So if you look at the world, especially in the beginning, the status of women was such that women were confined in the private realm domestic work, reproductive work, and paid care work. Yung mga gawaing bahay, yung tinatawag na private realm. While the public, public realm, which is the one studied by men and historians, are the ones uh, dominated by men. So thus, women becomes invisible because the focus has always been on the public realm, on what men do outside of the home. The other reason also is we lack sources or Yung tinatawag ni uh, Maria Luisa Camagay, very known historian in the Philippines based at the UP. The bodies that we use or the sources of our knowledge have always been looking at, has always been the ones that uh, are considered more important, the male work or the male, uh, male uh, activities. So that's the reason. Also, there are very scant resources on women. Tungod kay, uh, aside from few women historians, because uh, women are not in the society, especially during the colonial period of history. Uh, so in the words of Lacan, the very reason why women are invisible is in all knowledge construction, not, not, not only in history. It's because uh, women are considered the other. You're the other. So in the binarism, yung aspeto lang, the more dominant positive characteristics, characteristics are attributed to the men, while the characteristics of weakness, of, of obedience, of uh, humility uh, are often attributed to the women. So that's why they're referred to the other. So you are the other, therefore, uh, you are subordinate, you are marginalized. The other reason popularized by the by Michel Foucault is that women do not have power in society. And in knowledge construction, there's also power. Whose ideas would prevail? Whose analysis prevail? And this is very important now in the context of the Philippines, Miss A, there is a, a question regarding 
historical revisionism. So it's very important on what sources we, we look into as a basis of our analysis and conclusion. So why women are invisible? Because women were not part very active in historical writing. And often the focus in historical writing are the military, the political, the diplomatic uh, activities and exploits of so that's why we are marginalized in that in that particular context. Dagang salamat, uh, Dr. Durai. So very well said. So we would discuss more later about how to make the women already visible. How how to to make the women visible from being seemingly invisible in history. So now uh, we are discussing the Visa the women warriors in the Visayas. We would like to ask, what is a warrior? So we will we have with us from the University of the Philippines uh, Visayas, studying about the Western the West Visayas women warriors, women resistance fighters. We have Dr. Rose. So Dr. Rose, we would like to ask you regarding what is a warrior and what is a resistance fighter, and what were they fighting for and what were they against. Mm -hmm. Okay, so ne next slide, please. I I deviated from the definition, dictionary definition of warrior, because if you will look at, it's only now that I realize that even the even language is sexist. So you see, a warrior is a man engaged or experienced in warfare, or a soldier, especially a brave or veteran soldier. So that is why I said it is gender biased. That, that definition alone would say that only men are warriors. As I said, the warriors that I'm referring to later on are women. Now, I also use the word resistance fighter because uh, they were also acting or resisting, whether actively or passively. In other words, it is opposing another force so as to destroy it or diminish its effect. So, for example, we use the term for guerrilla fighters or for the underground force. They were men, you know, usually. But I hope that along the way, you begin to see that these are also women. So, as I said in this roster of women warriors, these women did not have to be in the battlefield, holding bolos, guns, or other war materials and gadgets. They can be women up and against old feudal values, against a society oppressive to women by stereotyping, boxing them, restricting them from going beyond the box and using their potentials and skills as persons. These women have also used their brains, convictions, discernment, and innate sense of power to transform their societies into an environment which accepts what man can, women can. So they may hold a pen, the stethoscope or the scalpel and other instruments to prove their worth as persons. So this is how I would like to define warrior and resistance fighter. So who are these women no, who have led or made significant contribution in armed resistance against foreign colonizers, invaders during various periods in Panay history? By the way, my focus is uh, Panay. No? So you look at Panay is one of the islands in the Visayas. It is composed of Aklan, Capiz, Antique, Iloilo, and Guimaras. It's added. So we are part of Western Visayas, of Negros Occidental, as Western Visayas also. But my focus is only on Panay Island. Okay? So let no, us I start first. I hope I'm clear, no? So these are the women from those for for provinces of Panay. Uh, thank okay. you, uh, Dr. Rose. So um, uh, we, we are, uh, there is a greeting for you. I am from MJ Casabuena Perihel, uh, watching from Iloilo. Happy. Ay, Perihel, yes, Oton. <laughs> so, from Oton. Yes. <laughs> so um, we, we would be asking you also about the women warriors in the different periods in Visayas history. So first, we would like to ask, uh, we would also like to share that according to a Visayas historian, Dr. Rolando Brinaga, before the Spaniards came, the Visayas was one. We were not divided into different yes. And we had Correct. one language, 
before the Spaniards came. It was it was during the the Spanish occupation that there was already division among the different regions in the Visayas. So now we would like to ask also um, regarding the women warriors. Who are the women warriors in the different periods of West Visayas history? First, during the pre-colonial period and the Spanish colonization. Mm -hmm. Dr. Rose. Okay. So I tried to trace uh, pre-colonial history. By the way, the word history is again another <laughs> sexist term, no? Because when you say his story, it seems it's only the men's story. So sometimes you're using the word now, her story. So the term that was used by uh, our historian is mujer indigena, or what you call, if something is wrong, excuse me, your, yes, what is uh, uh, The slide is... Uh, okay, yes, yes, okay. Mujer indigena or indigenous woman. Actually, we only think of them as women in scarce clothing, no? But at the same time, because um, we, uh, in our Philippine history, we're able to come across this idea that there were two made, three rather, major institutions in pre-colonial history. The Dato, which is usually male, usually, uh, was responsible for political, military, and economic management. But of course, in some parts of the archipelago, there were also women who were region. The Panday, or the, uh, the Panday, it reminds me of Fernando Po Jr., <laughs> uh, is the technological, concern, is concerned with the technological aspect of barangay life. So construction of houses, bridges, whatever. While the Babaylan, who is usually a woman, was the central figure in the field of culture, religion, history, psychology, astronomy, medicine in the community. That's according to Salazar. And one is one also I came across one analysis that the term babaylan is supposed to be from the word babayi, you know, babayi. Now, beside mythology, she is more gender equal in the creation, for example, in determining what is the first man and woman. Because we have we, our our Christian education tells us that Adam and Eve were the first, no? But if you look at Visayan mythology, the first man and woman come out together from a bamboo. So they came out together. You see the equality, unlike in the European concept or the Christian concept that it's the woman is taken from the rib of a man, no? Okay, so that's the version of Adam and Eve. Another way is looking at it in terms of the Babaylanes. As I mentioned earlier, they were originally mostly women. If you have, according also to an historian, if it's a, a, a woman usually in, in her around 30s, no? in other words, she has a very matured woman. And if you are a man who wants to be a Babaylan, you have to be a atotermil, asog, or effeminate in behavior. I came across some Philippine movies na depicted, kaya, kaya pala, sabi ko, bakit siya bakla, no, ganun. So, that has historical pala, uh, cre ano, credentials. Okay, in Panay, the most popular is Estrella Bangotuanwa. She can be legendary for many, but even until now, there's a cult named after her. Next slide, please. No. Next slide, please. Okay, I'll show you, this is how uh, Visayan mythology would look at the first man and woman that they came out from the bamboo together at the same time. No? So uh, this is how we, I think, feminist way of looking na, at mythology, history, even literature. No? Okay, by the way, I'm also a, I'm a history minor, but I'm a, more into English literature. So they two, these two, these two, you know, uh, these two blend together. Okay, so let's go now to the Babaylan. The Babaylan, as I said earlier, was the central figure in the field of culture, religion, medicine, and all theoretical knowledge related to natural phenomena. So she was actually the one telling the datus or the people or the barangay when what is the time to plant, what is the time to harvest, what is the time to make war. In other words, she can read, or these women can read the universe, no? So that is how powerful they are, that the men will listen to their 
dictates that it's time for war, it's time for planting, it's time for sowing, and things like that. And they can explain theoretical knowledge in terms of uh, the, ano, the, the universe. At the same time, they are the ones who are in between dead spirits or the the spirits and the human being. So that's how important the Babaylan was in pre-colonial period. So you see, she had power, no? She had, so take note of that. When we talk about empowerment, the Babaylan was a highly empowered person. Next slide, please. Okay, I mentioned earlier, Estrella Bangot Banwa. This is how the folks would describe her that she can summon heavy rains for a parched earth by loosening her hair from its knot and raising her hand. Take note, because the Visayas is an agricultural country, I'm sorry, agricultural region, so the importance of a person who can make, um, make changes within the earth, no? like the rains are needed for planting, and then she can just, do this by loosening her hair. In fact, until now, there are still some people who believe in her that she can even, ano, she can even catch the, the lightning, according to some. Ano. So she's a right initiator in, to ensure favorable weather or a bountiful harvest. That's how powerful she was. Next slide, please. Okay. Now, even during the coming of the, um, of the Spaniards, there were still a lot of Abailanes, except that they were reduced in number because the trialists considered them as witches. They were given negative statistics so that ultimately later on, we have a few of these women later on. But we remember Babaylanes, Monica Gapon, and Agustina Hitikon. Take note, earlier there was only one word, name. But later on, the Spaniards came, they introduced also family names. But these two were the ones who resisted Muslim invaders who invaded Panay. Take note that it's not only the Spaniards who invaded the Philippines, but for Panay, for Panay, there were Muslim invaders. And in fact, later on, I'll mention under the one when who invaded, uh, who was the leader in Dumangas, Iloilo. Okay, continue, please. Okay, so this is the one, Petra or Pitay, who engaged the Muslim pirate who created the havoc in Dumangas. By the way, these Muslims were in Gimaras. No? You saw in my map that Gimaras is close to Iloilo and the nearest so far is Dumangas. So that she led the people against the Muslims and they were able to drive them away. Now let's now go. Actually, I'll go now to the Spanish colonization. Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, so I'm of course we all know that the Spaniards came at this, you know, the history of Cebu and the... Cebu and Iloilo and Panay rather, it's quite related because after the Spaniards were driven away by Tupas, am I right? They were not given food. So they went to Ilu to Panay and the place where they went is in Capiz in a place is now known as Pan Panay because when the Spaniards saw the place, all said there's food, Panay, meaning there is Food. So that's how it got its name. So you see, in Iloilo, at first, the men were the ones who fought against the Spaniards. But take note that it's not only the men, because women also joined the revolution later on. I would like to emphasize on Teresa Magbanua, Nazaria Lagos, and Patrocinio Gamboa. Next slide, please. Uh, Teresa Magbanua is probably the most famous of the three. Uh, excuse me, I that's on the Avancenia sisters. No, actually, these two they are the ones who put up the first, and the first school of learning for elite women in. So you see how two women saw to it that the women of Panay will not only be going to be a terios or your women are just going to the uh, to the conventos because education was in the conventos where they learned the where they learned ano, the alphabet and then stories about by the bible etc or via terios but because of these two women they realized that 
we mentioned also we empowered through education. So they put up the first school or maestra bitang school. But of course, it's only the women who belong to the upper class who could afford to go to school, no? Okay, so this is still, they, they founded this in Molo and the school is still there. Go on, please. Okay, now, Nasaria Lagos, before I go to Teresa Magbanua, is also a woman who came from Principalia. Yeah. She came from a landed family, but her husband became also Capitan, so that she was also known as Capitana. But during the revolution, what she did was their hacienda was converted into a revolutionary hospital where that's supposed to be the, revo the revolutionaries will be brought while after fighting, after they're wounded during the fighting. And so she did not have enough uh, knowledge probably from uh, the, any school of medicine, but these women made use of the learnings from Note, no? the, the Bukid Note women, the Babay Lans, who were already into medicine. So they made use of ngayon, sabi na, alternative medicine, herbals, and everything that they could make use of within the field so that they could, could treat the soldiers. Okay, that's Nasaria Lagos. The next one is Patrocinio Gamboa. Now, she also call her Night Patron. She was the lone female in the committee conspirador. You know the 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 in in Haro, the group of um, Filipino coming from the Principalia again came up with a committee to conspire in driving away the Spaniards. So they named this committee conspirador, but she's the only woman who joined because usually women's role is for intelligence information, and she. What is most significant is that in 1898, when the when the, when the Ilongos won the, re, the revolution in the Panay, they, the Santa Barbara was the seat where the flag was to be raised. So Manay Patro came from Haro, and with another another uh, lieutenant, Solinap, they pretended to be a couple fight in early in the morning while well, so where they were passing the different Guardia Civil lining from Haro up to Santa Barbara. Santa Barbara is two towns away from Haro. So they pretended to be fighting but actually the sword of Aguinaldo was inside the sort of a, an, 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 a, a native, um, how do you call that? We we'll call it car carito, no? And then what Banay Patrocinio Gobo did is to put the Philippine flag inside her, a uh, 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 Philippine flag, wrap it in on her hips, and then place the patadyong on top of it. So that, because they were fighting, the Guardia Civil did not have time to, iran, uh, to check them up because they thought, oh, these two are too early fighting each other. So they were able to pass through the Guardia Civil and brought the Philippine flag and the sword of Aguinaldo to Santa Barbara, where it was raised to signify that we have won the revolution. So that's Nay Patro, no? Okay, again, I said she belonged to the Principalia. Yeah. But the most famous of the three is Teresa Magbanwa, because you can find in all history books, no? So Nay Ista is from Pototan, Iloilo. And at first, she was just uh, I don't know, listening to the military and on the uh, achievements of her brother. She had two brothers who were generals in the Philippine Revolution, but her one brother died. What she did was to join the revolution, the revolution and also led, for example, in the battlefield of Pilar Capis and Sara Iloilo, she was the one who led. So because of that, of her achievements, she was given the title ng verbal lang, generala. At the same time, she continued her fighting even during the time of the American occupation so that she joined, she led the fighting in the area between what they call uh, Tabuk Suba leading to another part of Haro. No? So she won again. And because of this, she was given, as I said, recognition for such. She was even stronger than her brother. But after the Americans 
uh, ano, they have left and the Japanese took over. She went to Mindanao, but still she continued by assisting the Japanese. I'm sorry, the the anti-Japanese, ano, uh, anti-Japanese occupation in Mindanao. She died only in 1947. But Nai Patro was also a teacher, so she made use of her not, she made use of her education, but at the same time, it did not stop her from carrying the gun and fighting against the invaders. Okay, the, the, the last person. Continue, please. Ah, uh, dahil salamat, uh, Dr. Rosa. Ah, okay, am I through the Philippine? Or okay, the other, yes. Um, periods. So it's very interesting that uh, Babaylan, there are some definitions here in Cebu that Babaylan is a buying tambalan or a woman healer. Tambalan, oh, yes, in, yes. Cebuano is, tambalan in Cebuano is healer. So that's healer. why oh, okay. uh, babay, bab, some so similar, no? similarities. Babaylan, babaylan is called is babaying tambalan. So even, babaying tambalan. Ah, okay. yes, even so that's in, when Pigafetta wrote about what they saw in Cebu when they came here. So it's true, according to what you said, that the women were had a, a, an important place in society, in the community, because they were they could not eat pork if if the women would not do a ritual for the for the uh -huh. for the for, for the slaughtering yes. of the pig. Even the chief chieftains cannot be buried uh -huh. because cannot, the ritual yes. done by women. And of yes. course, in wars. It is the women who, I mean, the Babaylan who would do the ritual before the before yes. the war, before going yes. to war, and they made also, uh, according to our previous discussion in the past, the warriors would bring with them poisons. I mean, their arrows, their weapons were mm. poisoned. It the Babaylanes were the ones who made who who made the poisons, and they also mm. made antidotes. So while the warrior would go to war, the warrior yes. would be would be bringing an antidote with him, oh. made by women also the babaylan. Okay. So for death and life and death, <laughs> the women were part of it, the babaylanes, and even the the girls who pre to prepare them for marriage, because at that time virginity was an impediment mm -hmm. to marriage, according to also discussed in our. Uh, last year by Dr. Rolando Burinaga regarding also the sex lives of pre-colonial Visayans. Virginity was an impediment to marriage. That's why the Babaylanes would already prepare, the healers would prepare the girls. And now also according to Pegafeta, the, the sexual organs of the women, were, uh, the girls would already be gradually open starting at age six to prepare them for marriage. And the healers were also the ones who did that. And even the gadgets of the men because the women would not have sex, uh, would not have yes, yes. communication according to Pigafetta. No <laughs> communication with the men if the men didn't have those gadgets like, uh, what are those gadgets? The, the, the uh, ring, uh, the penis mm -hmm. ring, the uh, other kinds uh, of, of gadgets in their penis. So the, the women wouldn't have communication. So who? Who installed? Who who attached those gadgets? Also the healers, so the women also and the gays. <laughs> so, babay so <laughs> from from okay. birth to, to death. <laughs> so, okay, <laughs> salamat, Doctor Rose. It's a very interesting uh, discussion. But then we also had this. We traced we traced actually the history of Sinulog in Cebu. So we traced it. We traced it to the Babaylan dance, and we also traced it because according to Dr. Rizil Moares, Sinulog means... Ah, uh, Rizil Moares. Sulu. Sulu. It meant Sulu. According to... Uh, also, to, we went as far as Sulu, so we went to Sulu actually to trace Sinulog. Pamgras went to Sulu. Mm -hmm. And then we, we, we learned that before the Spaniards came, they had actually... There is a book on the Sulu Empire. But I was part of the principality of Sulu, but the relationship was trading and also with Cebu. So before the Spaniards came, there were kings among among the different areas in the Visayas, in the archipelago with the with the Muslims. But when the Spaniards came, so they created divisions. And when the they had they created, they, they created Christian settlements. 
Before the Spaniards came, the Visayans were the raiders and the so-called pirates. In yes. 1100s, the Visayans went as far as China to look for mm. things. According to that folklore, the legend, uh, the folklore of this very beautiful Buholana princess who demanded slaves from her suitor, who came from Leyte, and then um, the Dato Sumanga went as far as China to get what the the the, the woman the Boholana princess demanded. So the the Visayans were the pirate, the raiders, slave raiders before the Spaniards came. And now when the when the Spaniards came, when they occupied and they invaded some and Christianized some settlements in the Visayas, now the the, the Muslims wanted to weaken the military strength of the Spaniards. That's why they also, of course, according to UP professor of UP Institute of Islamic Studies, Professor Darwin Azari, he was one of our panelists also about Sinulog. And he said that mm -hmm. uh, it was also a sad part in their history when, the, when the, there were excesses, of course, in that uh, when, the, when the Muslims tried to weaken the... the, the they attack everyone, even the natives who so were formerly their mm. supposed to be their allies and their relatives and slave, I mean trade partners. So anyway, so that's how the Babylonians were really, according to your discussion, yes. they really were at the side of the people against the Spaniards and, and those who want, who oppressed the, the people. So the king said, so we have all we have our we have our on-site guest here and he's very excited to see you, Dr. Asong. We have our can we show uh Judge Menrado Paredes? Can we show him on the camera, please? I, so, I so know Judge them. Men, men is so excited. I know them. <laughs> <laughs> they were my yeah, we knowledge all that we were together but, sometime. Oh, so later now the camera is not available <laughs> for for Dr. Men Men. So he is here because yes, he to, we were to together with, with books here at Pamgrass and he is also excited to see you and Dr. Oh. Dorai. You were partners yes. in the human rights advocacy. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes. So and yes. he is even if he's a man, he is an advocate for women's rights. Right? right. Of course. <laughs> so <laughs> we're going to be one oh, of nice. the judges in our Visayan Women Warriors con contest, you will be, the, there will be three of you, Dr. Rose, Dr. Durai, and you, to judge the, the, <laughs> the youth. Because you're a woman, you have a heart for women, so that's why we will include you, even if you're a man. Uh, <laughs> he, was the, he was the former ex executive judge of the regional trial court. Uh -huh. And when the media has questions regarding society, like current events and everything, he is the go-to person of the, the, the journalist in Cebu. <laughs> so we also have, would like to recognize our student from the Cebu Techno Technological University and also others here, a better uh, descendant of the veteran from the World War II, and also others here that I haven't got the name, I, I didn't get their names yet. Thank you. So you have um, more questions for you, Dr. Rose. And there is someone wow. who says, uh, Maayong Hapon, Ryan Joshua Gonzalez. And also, Lyndon Johnson is, uh, this is, she, he is from Luzon. And he says, we love you. <laughs> and then, um, Mark Umpad Olohendra says, Maayong Hapon. So, um, Dr. Rose, we would also like to ask you, Regarding the women warriors in the West Visayas during the American occupation, ah, yes. the, occupation uh -huh. the liberation period, and during the martial rule. <laughs> okay. Uh, during the American occupation, of course, even if the Americans, if the, if the Spaniards uh, no, stayed for three centuries, the Americans, I think I've said for only half a century, but they have done a lot of um, you know hostilities in the you know in in even specifically in the Visayas. Now I mentioned earlier that um, Teresa Magbanwa continued her activities. Now the Americans while while the Spaniards introduced racism and at the same time education was only for the elite at first because they started putting up 
mga Catholic grand schools, well, the Americans introduced uh, public education, but they started first with the soldiers teaching until they brought with them the uh, Thomas sites. No, uh, these are trained trained teachers who taught in the Philippines. Now, uh, I will point out that. The call for this period was more now of the women being able to vote. We're not interested only that men are the ones leading, but women should also vote. So we give significance to the suffrage movement or the Panuelo activists, as one Korean called them, because this is now the campaign for the plebiscite. No? Please take note. But in the Philippines, the top three provinces to lead in the yes votes are Tacloban and Cebu for the Philippines. Huh? So that is significant, meaning to say our women are, were so determined to be able to vote. Huh? Okay, so the leader of this was Pura Villanueva Calao and then Sofia Reyes de Vera. I will mention the others later on. Now, as a uh, next, please, no next slide, please. Uh, Pura Villanueva Calao. I sorry, I would like to touch. Sorry, sorry, pala. Ha? She's um, Capitana Francisca Cabanas of Cabatuan. Her role was also to be a what you call that. A bear, uh, she, she was the one who sent messages, she uh, sheltered and fed the soldiers, and even her. and the revolutionaries during the American period. But later, at the age of 66, she was tortured by means of the water cure. So she's one woman whom we remember for such, an how, how do you call that? For such kind of uh, heroism, no? Okay, so may I go now to the, super another one I would like also to add, you know what we did was to say, if there were generals, what about their wives? So we went also to, we went around and asked the families, it's not only in the museum, but also some relatives of these generals. So we came across Lucia Hisoli, the wife of Martin Delgado. For those of you who are not from Panay, of course you don't know Martin Delgado, but he was one of our greatest generals. And in fact, um, he was the last to surrender, no? So during the thing, he shared his heart, I mean, his wife, Lucia Isole, joined him in the hills. And in one instance, while the Americans were looking for her husband, because she's a big woman, she hid her husband in her saya while she pretended to be winnowing rice. So if you are not a brave person, usually you will be covering in fear while the American soldiers are looking for your husband. But you see, she hid her, her under her saya. So, Doctor so Rose, a, this is the literal yes. under the saya, and the literal <laughs> under the saya. But that's a good, <laughs> a good way, no, of uh, manifesting being under because you're actually trying to hide from your enemies. In fact, I said we noticed that the saya has significance among our women. Like, remember Patricia Gamboa? Well, she hid also the Philippine flag under also her. Saya, and this one also hid the gun under the Saya. So, see, I know. So, but you know what? It's sad when I look when we went to the cemetery to look at the, you know, the the monument or the I know, grave of uh, Martin Delgado. You can only see a small place given to her name. That is also another kind of marginalization no? or making women invisible. So you see, we had to do all of these things, going to the cemetery, asking uh, asking relatives of how, what had this new woman done. In fact, also the wife of uh, General Fulion in Antique. They're also very popular in Antique. But what about the wife? So we tried to go to the museum and then ask also some relatives. Go on, please. I think you have it in next, no? Go on, next slide, please. Ah, no, wala na siya. So I, just I touching on the wife. The wife actually is what actually a rich woman. In fact, it's her family who owned the boat, which brought the revolutionaries also to Antique. 
No, but then again, her name was Zelda mentioned. Now I, I will go now to the feminist of uh, for sorry to the plebiscite and to the Association Feminista Ilonga. Please take note that we have the Association Feminista Filipina, but it first started in Iloilo by a woman named Purita Pura Villanueva, no? Who later on became Pura Villanueva Kalaw. So at first, um so this but if you look at the list of women Pura Villanueva. Ramolo, Araneta, Infante, Guanco, Lopez Vito, uh, Ianson, Javeliana, Ibiernas, Lopez, Reyes, Sol. These are families, they, these women belong to very rich families. So again, I take note, uh, please take note that it's the women who came from the upper class because of their education will able to realize that they have to show how empowered they are in terms of the vote. So it is said that while the Asociación Feminista Filipina was working for uh, reforms in the reforms in education, reforms in in uh, in prison, Asociación Feminista Ilonga was really for uh, for women's votes. No, that's how important their advocacy was. So as I said, in the during the plebiscite, go on please. During the plebiscite now, I, he's, he, this is a picture of, uh, this is just a, an artist conception of Niseta Seguenza de Guanco, one of the Association Feminista Ilonga members, who is the grandmother of former Senator Diki Cosetem, no? Okay, next please. So names like, as I said, no, I mean, so this is Pura Villanueva Kalaw in the different stages of her life, no? Actually, she became the first, um, if you would look at it, no? First queen in Manila, no? How do you call that? Carnival queen. So she's beauty, she's brains, and she has, of course, the determination to fight for, her, for women's rights. So that's, I think she graduated from Philippine Women's College, uh, the university rather, no? Then later on, may read uh, Kalaw, a writer, and uh, anak nila si the former senator, what's her name? Kalaw, uh, Senator Kalaw is, uh, is a daughter. Okay, so that's the women suffragist movement led by Sofia Reyes de Vera as well as Pura Villanueva Kalaw. Sofia Reyes de Vera married somebody from Tacloban. Then later on, her husband became a, 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 a sort of, um, was sent to America and she also went with the husband. Go on, please. All right. During those times, the pre-war period, women already starting to join politics. No? And so I cite here as an example, out of how many men officials, there is only one woman, but she's a brave woman, no? Encarnacion Hiroche of Pabia, Iloilo. Pabia, by the way, is my hometown. Okay, so, so far, these are some of the uh, women during the American colonial period, which I have mentioned. I said they may not use, they, some have used the gun, but others have used their brains, their determination, and want, they want the ballot. No? Okay, next please. Shall we go now to the Japanese occupation? Okay, the Japanese came 1941, no? If the Americans came 1899, the Japanese came 1944. So this time, if we have the guerrillas or the resistance fighters, and usually these are men, because you know, I came, I looked for a book about a certain the guerrilla and all of the names mentioned there were men, no women. So what we did was we went to Central Philippine University and look at the library to look at the participation of women in the Japanese, in the, the occupation or resistance against the Japanese. And so here is a list of women. And you will notice, for example, that usually they are nurses and then or not uh, they're dentists or they are the ones who are trained into medical services to be able to assist the wounded. 
We did not have so much names of those who joined the fighting except for a few. But take note again, here is Natividad Peralta who joined her husband, Gerald Peralta, in the mountains and what her role was as a cryptographer. So when there were you know, signals coming from the, um, from the American friends at that time, they were the ones who tried to, you know, how do you call that, to interpret the, the, interpret the messages. Now, I came across this term, Women Auxiliary Services, because these were women who also helped in terms of raising funds, collecting food and supplies, or became undercover agents or intelligence operation agents, or they came up with soup kitchens for the guerrillas. It's a long list, actually. Huh? I came across this word again, Women Auxiliary Services. Why auxiliary? Auxiliary is again a form of marginalization. So parang support lang ba kayo? In fact, the one, I came across a line from an, a Filipino soldier who said, you know, without these women, we would have all died because they were the ones helping us. While we were fighting, they were the ones assisting us so that we can go fight again. No? Okay, so this is a list here of just a few from Aklan, from Antique, from Capis. And then I would like to give to Esperanza Villanueva. She used to be a librarian in a Philippine high school, but yes, she also, but her was also to be a, you know, a messenger. The same thing with uh, Luisa Parcon. They did intelligence work. Luisa at least survived the war, but Esperanza Villanueva was captured by the Japanese. Because she was able to flush the messages in the toilet, so she was tortured and later on killed. Then deep na, I came across the mother of, of uh, ano ni, Miriam. And so she said that she started at first giving nursing and a training, but later on, she could not resist. And at first she said the women were trying to ride, ano, hide from the Japanese for fear of being raped. So she said, I grew tired of hiding and hiding. So I went and then ready to be a fighter. So she joined for a period to the fighting. So you see they are into medical services. But at the same time, during this time, the Hukbo ng Bayan Laban sa Hapon was a group again of uh, Filipinos, or in this time in Il Ilongos, who joined also the fighting. But this, there's one woman whose name stood out, and her name is Cornacion Chiva or Commander Waling Waling. She joined the Hukbala movement. At first, uh, she got married to I don't know, but uh, to uh, uh, I know, hope, but who died, and after that she got married again to another man who was more of a, who was more of an organization. I know. So Nai Oracion or Waling Waling was one of the leaders and leaders in fighting the hook, and she continued this until the I don't know, until the post-war period. Go on, please. So here is a picture. Now we're able, we're lucky that. We were able to interview some of those who survived. And here you see that these were the, at first, when the Illumination Hospital closed because of the war. So the women went to, to the guerrilla units and then uh, they volunteered to serve as nurses. No? So these are a picture of these women, brave women who joined the fight against the Japanese. Go on, please. All right. So we're lucky also to have their pictures, no? And here is a collage of their pictures, wartime heroes as nurses or as messengers or intelligence workers. Go on, please. Okay, so after the war, we're glad to come across this picture. Show again that there was women's participation to and rec we recognize, even the men recognize that there were women who were part of the resistance against the Japanese. So here is uh, a list of, we have the list, but um, I don't have that time to show it to you now, no? So we're glad that we have this from Central Philippine University and some of the women who survived who provided us these pictures. Go on, please. Okay, so uh, it's not only women who fought, as I, you know, in the fields, but take note, there were other women 
who made use of their brains, of their talent. So like, for example, Maria Garcia Ford and Rosario Santos Lopez were women who put up sugar milling companies. One was in Capiz and the other one is in Iloilo. So can you just imagine sugar cane plantations run by these women because they belong to a family of plantation, a, a wide plantation, but they were not contented with just this sitting pretty, but they ran their, this plantation. At the same time, some women went into publishing, like the Mexica sisters, whose family put up the Makina Ogalingon printing press, while Sanchez has the family putting up La Panayana. Take note of the role of the press during those times. No, It's the only way for many writers to express, in terms of writing, their grievances, their resistance against the invaders, as well as those who are in the ruling class. And so take note also that some women did go into legal work and politics. For example, Rosario Santa Salas Doromal, whose father, Quintin Salas, was also a general, went into law. In fact, it is said that she is the second woman lawyer uh, in, in Panay, no? In fact, and the first one lawyer is somebody from, in not Panay, but the Philippines is from Capiz. Simplicia Magam of Maria, his father was also into the resistance movement, joined later on as lawyer as well as a fighter. And then the rest are Trono, Montabiana. They used to be medical, I don't know, they were, they were in the medical field, but later on they joined politics. Because this is now the start of, it's not only women voting, but also women participating in politics, no, in governance. Okay, so that's after the war. Go on, please. So here are some of their pictures. No? So uh, we're able to get also some pictures from their families. And then these are the pictures. Ah, oh, yeah, this one is a picture of the, of the house of... Ah, uh, this is Josefa Abiertas, the first woman lawyer of the Philippines from Capiz. So there is, I think, an institution in Manila named after her. Okay, go on. Go on, please. Okay, for politics and governance, we're getting closer to contemporary period. So these are some women whom we can cite, no? And I think you've, you've heard of some of them. Aniki Kositeng, then Miriam, of course, then Tabiana, and, and Concon Delegate, or as Congresswoman, and then the first woman governor, Sally Perez. From, and there's also one woman governor from Guimaras that is uh, Anony Lopez. Okay, go on, please. For trade and industry, these, these are the women I mentioned, si Maria Ford and si Lopez. No? Si Don Amandre is into uh, fisheries, no? management. Okay, go on, please. Now, during martial rule, <laughs> I'm sorry, but <laughs> I'm a bit, I don't know, uh, at this time, we are still writing. I, I know, no? in Cebu, we are also, we're also doing the stories. We are still doing the stories. But I was just... I would just like to point out that here in the Visayas, the names of Concha Araneta and Luisa stood out, no? Concha Araneta is still alive and she's still hiding. And she, uh, she, she's actually an assumption UP Visayas graduate who married another, ano, Pablito Araneta, another also activist, but Concha is still running the show, no? In her, not only anti Marcos, but this time also working for, uh, as we said, <clears throat> uh, perpet, uh, no, per, so what Mao Zedong said, perpetual revolution. Now, Luisa Posa has disappeared until now we don't know whether she's dead or alive, but it is said that she must have been abducted somewhere, and until now, um, no, no, I know, we know knowledge about her. I know whether she's dead or alive. But these are the two women whose names stood out during the anti-Marcos period. And I, I mentioned also Nanay Waling Waling or Coronacion Chiba. She's also dead. No? She was also killed by crossing the river in, uh, in Kalino. In fact, it is said 
that during her burial, all of the stairs, everything stopped in Kalinog to give a explanation for what this woman had done for the peasantry. Yes. Okay. Um, it's so amazing. I'm so amazed, uh, Dr. Rose, to, to see the women in the Visayas being so persistent in the fight. We see Teresa Magbanwa who fought oh, against oh. the Spaniards and continued fighting American. even and the against the Americans Correct. and against the Japanese. We have Coronacion Chiba, yes. Commander Walingwali, oh, oh. who fought against the Japanese and continued fighting even against the martial law. Yes. Oh, so we see right. the persistence, the patience, the persistence, mm -hmm. the determination of women. They don't stop. They yes. just continue fighting. They don't stop uh -oh. <laughs> until there is like, something to be fought. Yeah. that had been had been imprisoned several times, but when she goes up, then she goes back. Nanay Walang Bali had also been brought to Bilibid during Bagsaysay's time. And she bore a child there, uh, she Dax, later on became an activist during the martial rule. So they wanted to catch Dax, the, the, the son, but because they could not catch him, so what they did was to... Ano, arrest uh, Nay Waling Waling. In fact, we were together <laughs> in, ano, in Ilo Ilo. <laughs> so you are also a woman warrior, a resistance <laughs> fighter. <laughs> no, no, I do not hold a gun. I'm just Thank good you in you Dr. Rose, for the, your, your, your sharing with us. I'm only, your, I'm only good in speech. Your, your <laughs> valuable, it's very precious information and history and facts about we're, we're, how we're the very, women fought throughout yes. the year so we're very happy that you have this data so that the women will no longer be invisible so that the women will already be visible through your writings yeah. and hopefully the your your writings will be published so soon <laughs> so nagang salamat dr rose now we have a question for dr Durai. so we would also like to share with you that in cebu so we don't have um, the same uh, as extensive documentation as Dr. Rose, but the, the, the historians also, the Cebu historians, have mentioned the women in, in, in history, in Cebu history. For example, Dr. Michael Inane, Dr. Michael Inane wrote about, published a book about the arenas of conspiracy and rebellion in the late 19th century Philippines. He he indicated here about um, the three hundred about three hundred leaders of the Cebu Katipunan, but only about three only three women were here. So we were actually looking for women. So we have Ferdi Aparticio from uh, Tagig and Pateros, who have been a constant, a loyal a viewer of our events. He has been asking us about women heroes or women katipuneras, I mean, katipunera, ka, women in the katipunan, to whom we we honored in our, in, in Palm Grass, the Cebu Heritage Hotel. So that's why we said we have a room, a, 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 a sweet room named in honor of the Tuluka Babay nga nagtahi sa bandera. So these women, Mauricia Gahuman, Hostina Peña, uh, uh, and um, th there were three, uh, Buena Ricardo. So they were not in he in the in the bias sketch of the, the leaders of the Katipu, Cebu Katipunan because Michael Inane, Dr. Michael Inane only included those uh, leaders of the Katipunan that were mentioned three times. So only three women made it into the bias sketches here. And one of them is Juliana Riviles and Constancia Alaura, who was personally recruited by Leon Quilat. And she distributed amulets and she also made, uh, she also distributed flyers and they helped, their family helped reproduce the amulets. Also, Juliana Rivillas was an active planner of the, of the, of the Cebu Katipunan. She, she, she helped plan the 1898 Cebu Revolution. And also Paulina Padilla, also a relative of the Padilla plan, a clan, Padilla clan who, who led the revolution in Cebu. So now um, I would like, so we have our books here at Palm Grass that we published, the, Ce the history, um, the Cebu, uh, Cebu history, a short history of Cebu from 1800s 
from 1500s to 1890s. So this is uh, published by Pamgras. So also we we would see the the women here mentioned um, in the different in the different periods of Cebu history from the Spanish occupation until the the victory of the revolution against Spain. So we also see women entrepreneurs mentioned here, but uh, there is not a separate chapter for that. So they were just mentioned in, in, in history, the, the entrepreneurs, the, those who joined the revolution, those who fought uh, in the revolution and their contribution in the revolution. And also in this book by Le uh, Leon Kilat by Emil Hustimbasti. So the women are mentioned but there is not a separate chapter for women. So Dr. Michael Lunane will be with us on April 3. He will be one, uh, he will be our resource person. We will have conversations with him on the Mangugubut, sa Kagubut, sa Tres de Abril, sa 1898 in Mil So we will be having conversations as we celebrate the 124th year of the Battle of Tres de Abril. We would be asking him regarding the women in, 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 in the Cebu Revolution, in the wars against Spain, against the Americans, and against the Japanese. So Dr. Michael Inane has made, uh, has written and published books on Cebu history during the Spanish time and also during the war against the American. so Americans. So we would be asking him <laughs> so that we would, we would already see the women and the women will no longer be invisible so this is the term used by dr Durai. may we have dr Durai, please so we would like to ask dr Durai regarding because according also as discussed the women were so uh they had a very high possession i mean they were they had very big contributions in society before the spaniards came and why is it and how did the women's the visayan women's place in society change from pre-colonial to colonial times? Thank you for that question, Miss A. And I would like to thank my friend Rose for that very beautiful documentation, stories of the women in Panay and their contribution to the struggle. Uh, as mentioned by uh, Agrippina here earlier, that we have very scant resources we still have very limited resources. And if there are mention of women, they are mentioned as the ones who, who made the flag, not in the actual combatants in the revolution. But the making of the flag is part of revolutionary symbolism. And that's also very important. And there's also a mention of only one uh, relative of a revolutionary, the Padilla brothers, uh, uh, Miss Madame uh, Antawag Martin. Juliana Revillas, as mentioned, no, the for white her contribution, the yeah, white the white of the revolutionary, for her contribution in the organized operation, and I would like to believe that the 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 presence of the Babaylanes in the pre-colonial period um, is not to Luzon, and as documented by the Spanish chroniclers, they were also in the Visayas. And even in the millenarian movements, the other popular movements that erupted in the mid of American rule um, in this uh, Colurum uprising, the, the Pulahanes, and even during the Tamblot rebellion and the Dagohoy rebellion, we can, we can infer that women participated actively, but we really uh, lack um, hard evidence to prove and to elaborate on their participation. But even given the fact that they were Babay and they were spiritual leaders, healers, and playing very important colonial period, we could say that they played very important role in the revolts and against Spanish colonialism and Frilocracia or the dominance of the priors. What changes happened, as you ask, to the to the priestesses? To the, to the to the mujer indígena or the native women as mentioned by Rose with Spanish colonization. The pre-colonial women as born by our accounts, by facts, that they were uh, some sort of egalitarian societies existed. They were considered equal. 
they can become uh, leaders of the of the pre-colonial societies we call barangay. They could inherit uh, from their parents. Um, they they uh, even uh, are seen uh, even one of the historical uh, of the documents of the missionaries mentioned that they were um, what we call enjoying their sexuality in the pre-colonial period. Virginity was not a virtue uh, at the time, and this notion was only imposed by the coming of the Americans. So Bailanes and the Babylon spirit was lost with the coming of colonialism. And our heroes, Arizal, has very well uh, documented what happened to the Mohen Indigena through the characters of Maria Clara, to the characters of Hule in his novels. So the the Filipina, the the, the Filipinas or the Mohen Indigena uh, lost the, their powers and their rights and and privileges in the pre-colonial period, and they became domestic. They were confined to the three case Kirch, Kirch kindergarten, meaning they were confined to the domestic work with the coming of the Americans. The private realm were given, were assigned to the women and that they were taught uh, more of religion and the, the, that kind of religion uh, distorted their mind, became submissive to the friars and they thought that through novenas and through awits and through prayers, they could redeem themselves. And all these are beautifully critiqued by Jose Rizal uh, in his two novels because uh, the, the submissiveness of the Filipina and the, the marginalization and the oppression of the Filipinas exemplified in the character Sisa were all products of colonialism. So colonialism therefore marginalized the people, the Filipino people, and more particularly the women. But in the 19th century, there are... Uh, there's a documentation made by by Maria Luisa Camagay, known um, film historian, about the very active role of women in 19th century economy. And there are also uh, limited resources in, as far as Cebuan Visayas, entrepreneurial spirit of the Cebuanos. And I think there are some documents talking about or um, attesting to the fact that uh, Cebuano women were very active in the economy and they helped uh, their families um, gain wealth and become very prosperous as far as their involvement in the Cebuano economy. So nine, there is a need for more um, reconstruction about this point of 19th century Cebuana to add more to the study of, uh, of Kamagai that there were... Uh, women vendors, women teachers, women workers who figured even in the alborotos, as this is called, alborotos or, or we call resistance against uh, the Spanish owners of factories because they did not get wages. What I can see in my uh, of, um, literature about the, the Cebuanas, I could go see that in the suffragette so movement during the Philippine significant role were played by Cebuanas and they, they there are a few leaders mentioned when I look at the document someone with a family name Climaco and uh, um, and maybe related to the Cuencos also because the representative Cuenco uh, advocated for the right of vote the right to vote or suffrage in the Congress in the beginning during the Philippine Commonwealth so these are uh women coming from the middle class of Cebu and who were very much engaged in the women's club before. And uh, they were they were instrumental in getting the Cebuanos to vote. And based on my reading, there are uh, in Cebu, there were many votes for the right to uh, right of suffrage of women. And thus the women in Cebu and in Leyte uh, played very important role in educating the the Filipinas to vote because vote and their vote did not reach about 400,000, then this right of suffrage will not be included and will not be approved. So may significant role yung mga Cebuanas dyan. And we need to gather more data about this. And during the revolution, there there was there were mention about uh, nuns, uh, 
in the Colegio, now the Colegio de la Imaculada Concepcion, uh, involved in uh, what uh, what our famous heroine uh, Sora did, helping uh, put up um, hospitals, treating the wounded, etc. And even in the study of uh, the leader here in Cebu about the the Japanese occupation, there were few mention of um, of women in the guerrillas. We are confident to to say that uh, the women were involved in the oxygen in uh, in uh, playing courier or giving information publication. Although we could not we could not say categorically that like in Panay there were women members of Balahap and there were commanders of the Huk Balahap coming from Cebu because I think uh, we don't have record about the expansion of the Hukbu ng Bayan Laban sa mga Hapon as far as Cebu. I think we have to unearth a lot of data on that. So how about in the American period of um, given the, the prominence again of the of the men in his that I said earlier that the history has often been of the male perspective as well as the perspective of the elite. Maybe we could say that since General Maxilum was very much involved, we can surmise that his relatives, uh, her female relatives, we engage in the resistance against the American occupation. But we need to unearth more data along this line. And maybe uh, when I look at the, the very resource-based uh, book of uh, Emeritus, Professor Emeritus Resil Mujares, all that were listed in the documents were, were the male leaders of the, of the revolutionary government here in Cebu. So we still have to want us at this point of history. So we can only say that they help, but we don't have uh, photos or etc. We need, uh, we would challenge our story look into this um, for the lack of sources or what we call uh, uh, references to, to be able to come up with more evidences but in the in aside from the suffragette significant document documentation of women involved in the women's club for the right to vote in the in and in the referendum we could uh, we could have we have a lot of documentation, however, on women during the in the contemporary period of history. And so in the contemporary we can see significant changes where Cebuanas uh, have played very prominent role in the anti-Marcos uh, struggle. And we have um, uh, one who became head of the ALG in the Inita Cortes de Luces. She, she became a member of uh, court because of her prominent role in the anti-Marcos struggle. And in my own documentation of the role of the grassroots women in the history of Cebu, particularly during the Marshall period, I did the life stories of urban poor women leaders in Cebu. And I can uh, conclude that from the life stories, women, uh, played very important role. They were agents of change also in Cebu in the resistance against the Marcos dictatorship, in the struggle for human rights, in dismantling the Marcos dictatorship. So we have uh, this documentation of these women leaders, uh, grassroots that I have wrote in my dissertation uh, could be a contribution to, to uh, surfacing social history and the voices of the muted and the marginalized. So at this point, we really have to gather more data to construct history as a social history, not just political history, military history, but a social history where the voices of muted, the silenced would come out, the urban poor, the indigenous or the lumads and the other sectors that are now part of the broader struggle to effect real change in our society. So that's what I can so far say in the context of the changes uh, of the status. So the women who were confined to the home, to the church, who were made to emulate 
uh, the submissive and the meek Mama Mary instead of the of the very very Mary a change in the 19th century and hopefully we'll document more about this and this will be a challenge to a lot of historians and Philippine studies specialists to document and now I am challenged to finish the unfinished work with Judge Men Men Paredes and Dr. Rose Asong and maybe with the help of Ayan that we will reconstruct the women and the men during martial law, especially in the context of the ongoing revisionism and distortions of the history of our country for those who want to return to power in the upcoming, uh, forthcoming May 2022 elections. So history is very vital. And we see that in contemporary times, women have also figured prominently in the construction of our nation and in the fight and in the changes and in transformation. So more documentation is needed. And if there are history majors and educators listening to me, I'm challenging you and maybe the Cebuano Study Center now under uh, Paglaum would uh, be able to help us in this regard. Yes, Hope Saban Panyu would be able to help us, friend uh, Jojo Bernales. So I challenge you all to construct the voices of those that are not yet heard and uh, stories are not prominent, are not visible in our writing of history. And with that note, I would like to return to you, Miss A. Dr. Uh, Dr. Duray, we, did, did, were, did you stop your, it was uh, your cameras uh, stopped uh, accidentally because we could no longer see you. You are, you, you are only with us with audio. <laughs> So you oh, have been sorry about that. Voice over. Over that. Sorry for the technical glitz. Okay. Uh, okay, like, That's an example so, of silencing. Yeah. So um it was a very beautiful challenge. It's uh it's really uh, uh something that we should be inspired to do. And it is um to 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 do the documentation, especially for Cebu. The Panay women already did it. We are so we are so proud of them. And our pride of them would hopefully inspire us to to have that same effort here in Cebu. So, um, Dr. Duray, there is a question for you, and I guess this is also for Dr. Rose regarding uh, from from our educators from DepEd in Pateros and Taguig regarding the comfort women in yeah. the, the Japanese time. So, um. Can you tell us about the, uh, them and their struggles also? May we have also Dr. Rose, if she can also add. So we welcome the teachers uh, joining us uh, right now here at Hardin Dagami. From, they come from the, the training from Comilic. They are serving also the elections. So we have um, nearly 20 of them here right now. So at Hardin Dagami. So welcome to our event on the women warriors of the Visayas. So um, so Dr. Uh, Rose and Dr. Duray, uh, yes, do we have yeah. Dr. Duray first regarding um, this question from Ferdi Apartisho regarding the comfort women during the Japanese period? Yes, uh, at a certain point, uh, the issue of the comfort women became uh, very popular or prominent with the writing of the story of Lola Rosa, remember her? Lola mm -hmm. Rosa, a hook leader, whose life story is very well documented, uh, the, that she, she became a comfort woman at a very young age. She served a lot of Japanese in the, in the comfort station. That was comfort station for the Japanese, but never comfort for the women. Japanese soldier of at least 10 to 20 Japanese in a day. So uh, they were comfort women for the Japanese. And it was a policy of the Japanese Imperial Army to put up this station so that they'll become good fighters when they are allowed to have sex with women. So a lot of women, uh, especially the, the Lolas in Pampanga, where there were a lot of Japanese occupation, uh, the Japanese soldiers uh, served 
to provide sexual services to the Japanese. In Cebu, we have some documentation done because the NGO Women's Resource Center of Cebu was very active in documenting the law who became victims of, uh, of the Japanese sexual slavery. It's really sexual slavery. And the, some of the comfort women were brave enough to tell us some of them would rather uh, keep their, their hidden and the Women's Resource Center helped them uh, document their uh, document their sad during the Japanese occupation, and some of them were given uh, some compensatory uh, help because the gov uh, the government of Japan did not acknowledge this publicly. But it is the NGOs that really were very open NGOs of Japan, and so they were given compensation for 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 their sufferings during the the Japanese occupation. So that's a very sad aspect of the occupation, the Philippines uh, using our women sexual <clears throat> slaves. And then some documents, doc, stories tell, uh, reveal that a uh, portion of Honkera was used as a place where yes. the rest and recreation, and that is where women, and they serve so many uh, Japanese in one day. And so Lola Rosa in her story told about her bleeding and how she had venereal disease because of this sexual exploitation. So po ang masaklap na aspeto po ng ating kasaysayan at mabuti at yung mga victim. There are about 500,000 yung na-mention na sexual slaves in the entire Asia. And um, so it's... Uh, there may be more that did not come out because very difficult to open the wounds. Cebu, uh, I could categorically say that we have a significant number of uh, Cebuanas who blame as comfort women uh, during the Japanese occupation. So would add some more to that. Uh, Dr. Rose, oh, can you uh, okay. give, give us... Uh, I did not include comfort women because, of course, no, they are not really... They, they were not... Years. They were victims, but we have we have very good documentation in my in our study. So the most popular is Lola Masing, no, or Tomasa Salino, who was you know, a victim. Thirteen years old when the Japanese came, the Japanese came were interested more in the mines of San Remigio. So they had men there, but all for women because they also needed sex slaves. In fact, well, the Japanese her father was decapitated trying to protect her. And so she was, I don't know, she was, uh, she was taken and, uh, of course, you know, the, the, being a sex slave. Okay, so the, just like, as you said, there's a place in Honkera, just here in Iloilo also, there's a place known as the Ibasa Arsenal Street, no, where they were forced to, to do you know, service. Actually, ano ni, I'm lucky to have gone to, a, to our house in Antique. Because Lila, Philippines, no, that's the one in charge of comfort women issue, advocacy, was able to get ano, ne, ng, uh, from Japan, they were able to get, uh, how do you call that, sponsors. So this Japanese, it's an NGO in Japan, which took care of mga comfort women here. So they built a house for her, and then a, a sort of her medication until she dies was provided by this, ano ne, by this um, NGO. And then they put up also in Japan a, a musical. It's based on her life. Because, and then it's based on her life, wherein the story shows, you know, and the, the advertisement was a sewing machine to show that uh, para siguro for, for, para she will be able to, uh, is to sew, you know, through sewing. So it's very nice, it's interesting because. Uh, I met the Japanese also woman who came to Iloilo, no? yeah, part of that NGO thing, through Susan Makamual. You've heard of her, Dorai. And then we also have um, narratives of four women, comfort women, uh, done in a research work by Francis Lictawa here. They were 67 to 68 years old already. So they were able to get to tell us stories about their life. So all of these so far, as, as we said, have been also documented. And then there's, in fact, in fact, there's a novel which is based on the story of uh, comfort women, something like that. But 
again, I would like to point out na, ano ni no, na, luckily, we said, this is, um, no, this, I think this is one of the basis why the Philippine government was able to get some money from, ano, from Japan, am I right? Because of, uh, kaya lang, hindi na punta sa comfort women, but instead, it went somewhere else. Anyway, in fact, uh, thank in you, Japan, uh, Dr. Rose and Dr. Duray. I hope at Ferdi, a party show from DepEd uh, um, Association of Teachers in Taguig and Patero said, uh, our panelists have answered your question regarding the uh, comfort women in the Visayas uh, during the Japanese time. So now we would like to ask this question to Dr. Rose. Thank you, Dr. Duray. So we have this question for Dr. Rose. Um, regarding the because uh, doc, uh, of course dr de Wright told us about how the the women became no longer uh known in co colonial times or their contribution during colonial times have been um have been diminished then we would like to ask dr rose regarding the regarding these women war warriors the women resistance fighters uh. in the Bisaya. <clears throat> What were the common characteristics or the com commonalities mm -hmm. of the women warriors from the Visayas? So if you would look at <clears throat> the Babaylan, no? there is a common characteristic of Babaylan. As we said, there are, these are women. Uh, they have a postmenopausal state, something like that. No? They uh, my line of four. So they are, they are supposed to be wise at that age. And then they have uh, they have powers. No? They have powers to talk to the spirit. And then they have healing powers. They have, uh, they are psychologists at the same time. What else? No, there's so much role. So practically the same throughout the Visayas. The, the way I listen to Dora's presentation or to your Agrippina's presentation, similarities, no. Except of course, as we said, <clears throat> we can, uh, uh, we can, uh, we can. Uh, you know, I would like to point out that you know it's not only pula sa ano ni, because even our folk history and mythology, which is you know mythology. Are supposed to be the sub, no, subconscious, the sub, subconscious, ano, of the people. The characters in our maragdas, in our, ano, are women who are strong, women who are who have powers. So you can see that they represent the women of the pre-colonial period, that they were not weaklings. Except when the Spaniards came, they have the same characteristics now. Because the Japan, the Spaniards introduced what you call an Iberian culture, where feudal culture, where women are in the lower stratum. No, so you see, the the, the priors and the Spaniards and the leaders introduced a mentality, tawag natin colonial mentality, na that prevailed throughout the whole country. Now, uh, education was only for men. But some women were able to go to edu higher education because they were rich, no? That's common. But what about, but very little knowledge do we have about women from the lower class? You see, you know, that's, that's what we see in, uh, uh, we look at the, uh, we look at our history. Very few mention of women from the lower socioeconomic class, no? So as I mentioned, sabi ko, then so it started the restriction there are this uh, I, I think i have i have uh, i have that in my slides am i right at the end are you yes. at the end i have regarding the characteristics of this women yeah, I have those slides yes uh -oh. that is can can we go Next to that uh -oh. to the right. slides at the end at the end regarding please what were their yes. socioeconomic class, education, yes, yes. Uh -oh. and resistance? May we have uh -oh. the so, next slide for the question number 14? Yes, yes. yes. Uh, yeah. Like this, for example, egalitarian tendencies manifested in folk history and folklore. Like many one T1 in Maragdas insisted on having a gold necklace. So see that one, just remember in the Barter of Panay, it's the Datu uh, who had two, but she insisted that she will also have a part, no? None. Kapinangan, a character in Maragtas, was driven away by the husband Sumakwell for infidelity, but she did not ha ha spend her time suffering from isolation and shame, but had a liberating experience in integrating with the Ati community and assume a new identity as a lion. So means folkloric women characters like Aluncina are independent women imbued with wisdom and sense of fairness. So even in, I don't know, so this 
is the characteristic, therefore, of women during the pre-colonial period. They were also traders and emissaries. In fact, the Spaniards were surprised why there were women traders and emissaries. And then, of course, as we said, the epic chanters. Uh, the, the, this, there's a difference between the, the, ano, the, the what do you call that, the babaylan and the epic chanters. Huh? These are women revered by the community for retelling their stories provide, to provide indigenous learning system and cultural identity. So these are women who just, you know, they, they just chanted the history, the story, and then handed down from generation to generation. So I know whether you also have that in, in, ano, no, in, in Cebu, but here in ano, Panay, we, have, we know our history traditions through the women chanters, and some of them are still alive. No? Okay, so that what this is, is what I see common in pre-colonial uh, Filipi Filipinas. No? Okay, what about Spanish spirit? As we said, the introduction of, uh, of an Iberian... Next slide, please. Next slide. Okay. Ah, nice. Okay, continuation. No? You have the chanters I mentioned kanina, no? We have then the, the Babaylanis. Uh, they are all anti, either anti-Muslim invaders or anti-Spanish. Go on, please. <clears throat> so I see, uh, well, I, I see this while listening to Dora, of course, uh, but I said that I don't, I don't hear about chanters in your presentation. Then during the Spanish era, as we said, again, the same no, characteristics of women coming from upper and middle socioeconomic class, educated in Catholic-run schools for the elite, like uh, Principe Colegio de San Jose, Santa Ana, and your speech, you, have, you, have, you mentioned also some of the schools there. And then they went to Manila for college education, Santa Isabel, Santa Catalina, di ba lang? But they started with education or traditional women's work like home, home economics, mga, in fact, in fact, yeah, ano ni, cooking, ano pa, what else, sewing. So this, they started with this kind of education. But you notice that later on, in the next era, they graduated. Next slide, please. Next slide. Okay. When, as we said, when American education became more different, it became more public, so more women from the socioeconomic class have gained various types of skills and education as nurses, educators, doctors, business managers, or entrepreneurs and other traditionally male professions. So in other words, what used to be only for the male, women also started to go into this. And American introduced also an education for all classes. So women from the lower socioeconomic class rose to prominence now this time. So the cry for women suffrage may be led by upper class women, but women from the lower socioeconomic class contributed a lot for the suffragist movement. Okay, so that's what I see common also to the Cebu and in Panay. No? I have continuation. Japanese occupation. The Japanese occupation. Again, no, the, uh, there were women also joining the anti-Japanese war. Some, uh, some joining the fighting, but more are into health care, where they were mostly trained. But as we said, it's sad to note that they were just called auxiliary, no? but meaning to say just, ano, ne? just to support no? or low valuation of their work. Okay, so that's it no? for the, the Japanese period. Post-war period this time, more women showed their ability to handle men's work, auxiliaries, and support men. For they were now battling traditional feudal society, which gave less recognition for women's power. So they joined and led legal, medical, political fields, which used to be men's domain. We have samples of these women. No? They have now joined other professions. And the... Next is, and I have a next period. Pa. So that's all. that's all for this period. And then, uh, Dr. Dr. Rose, there, there is a question from the National Quincentennial Committee page. When you were discussing about the, the chanters, um, and then uh, the question <laughs> from, from Angie Carballo, binokot po ba? Uh, uh, is, are the women chanters called binokot? No, no, not necessarily. Binokot were plus from age three or ano, they were already in the family. They were trained differently. 
but they were meant to be married to men coming from you know upper who can afford to buy them in terms of uh, or, uh, dory. dory or bride price yes, yes but they are different from the other family members because they're to be pretty and you know, but they they are they know how to sing they know how to dance they binano things like those but the chanters naman are not necessarily binukot ah. but they can also be binukot but the chanters learned also from their elders so the binukot take note ah, is a different set kaya nga poor women no they have no choice but to follow the that's a, uh, of their families. that's according to but uh, the chanters the, were different ah. so they are also different from the babaylan the chanters would they be uh, assistance of the babaylan yes, or because but but they can, they can also be babaylan take note but not all babaylans are chanters and not all binukots are this and that but i would like to point out you know you made a study of the ano, yun, reproductive health practices in the among the bukidnon that's a term for the people in the mountains oh we're based at their knowledge of of ano of of how to uh, no, give birth of a woman reproductive knowledge can you imagine you know, we have that gone to medical school or but and yet they are so ano, ne, they are so in this no kaya lang as we said they are slowly disappearing also because philippine education also can be ano biased eh. but if you say you come from this ah no 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 but actually if you look at it with the incursion now of how do you call that kind of medicine? Alternative medicine. Traditional healing to be, practices. Yeah? Traditional diba? healing practices. Yes, plus alternative medicine. They're getting to be recognized again. No? Yes. So you can see, right? Am I right? No? Yes. Alternative we have, medicine. We have that discussion actually uh, uh, a few months ago last last year. with um, We traced the traditional healing practices in Cebu or in the Visayas, mm -hmm. with the Babaylan. So it started, the tradition is with the Babaylan. Mm -hmm. And we also talked with a healer, actually, who whose knowledge was passed on to her by her ancestors who yes. were from Sikihor. And the yes. Sikihor <laughs> were called witches because <laughs> they were healers. You say, so they have, you say Sikihor, <laughs> yes, they have this tradition of something, no? about herbs. So we were told the, the actually the, ah. the woman healer that the, the Tambala. Let's take note, no? there is what we call the herbalist. Take note, yes. no? there is a category also. The herbalist who are healing, making use of yung mga herbs, mga ang ano, plants, right? But there yes. is also the other, nga, use, making use of spirit, take note. Nga. So there is a difference between these two. No? The manog, the, ano ni manog, manog bulong kung sa amon pa, versus, iba naman ang babaylan, because the babaylan niya has spiritual ano, ni, access to, yes. sabi nila daw, no, gano, no? Yes. So even until your, now, if you, yes. yes, yes. So iba ang herbalist or manog bulong, ha? iba naman ang manog hiwit, ang mm -hmm. may negative bala, ano na. So it is now. It is now dichotomized. There are now. Um, there are now specialization because in the past there were healers. So they were also. So of course the healers would use herbs. So uh -oh. um, right now. So later, according also to a discussion with Doctor Rinaka, uh -oh. uh, I think he said that later the when before the healers were only women and and yes. men who dressed as women later uh -huh. because of the That's demonization true. and the witch hunting against women the, uh, there yeah. are now men who became healers in in, mm -hmm. in the later development in during the spanish occupation so now mm -hmm. uh thanks a lot dr rose we have one more question for you later we would like mm -hmm. to break with give you a break with this video that we want to show you so pam grass has been really has been trying to look for the women warriors for the katipunera in 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 Cebu history. So we looked at them. We looked for their names at the, in these books by uh, on on Leon Kilat by Emil Hustimbaste. We have the 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 book by Junishu C on the Cebu on the history of Cebu from 1500s to the 1890s. And we also looked for their names in the bio sketches of the of the of 
uh, in the, the case of the April 1898 uprising in Cebu, in this book by Dr. Michael Colonnane. So we saw this woman who, the Katipunera, a Katipunan leader. So there were three Katipunan leaders um, uh, identified by Dr. Michael Colonnane. So that's um, Constantia Alaura. So Constantia Alaura became our, we, we made her into the love, into a love interest of Leon Kilat in the play that we had, or we, that we have, Abdik Paskilat in honor of Leon Kilat because Leon Kilat is faster than or quicker than lightning. So our our play in honor if we have a play on on the on, on Leon Kilat, so it's called Abdik Paskilat. We have a love interest for him in that in that play. It is fiction, of course. Constantia Alaura, she she was one of the of the women leaders of the Cebu Katipunan. Mentioned by Dr. Mike Colinane as recruited personally by Leon Kilat. And also she there were meetings in her house, and of course there Leon Kilat sometimes um rested in her house because their family was uh, their, their their family was a family of Katiponeros. His father was also a Katiponero and his brother was also a Katiponero simply. They were they were they, they were the ones who reproduced the amulets and Constantia Alaura also distributed amulets. So we have this other woman, the the wife of Candido Padilla. So we have we saw another Katiponera, Juliana Revilles, a property woman, a mestiza from Dulho, and um, she was the one mentioned as an active planner. Uh, he was, she was active in planning the uprising and the 1898 revolution against Spain. She was one of the few women, so others um, were um, uh, helped in, um, in treating the wounds of the soldiers. So we have also the Hermanas de la, uh, the Hermanas de la Carreda, the, the, also the nuns, the sisters who, 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 who helped heal the, the Katipunan soldiers. And also, uh, we also have Paulina Padilla as one of the leaders. She was already 50 years old. She was a relative of Candido Padilla, and she was one of those who were, who were uh, considered as the leaders of the Katipunan. So Pamgras made a song and a video. So we composed a song. The words were written by A. Agrippina Gibelondo. Uh, that's me. And, and so we, the music was, um, was composed by young musicians in Cebu, uh, co-composed also by, um, by our performer, a tawag ng tanghalan finalist, Jerlyn Abanyo. And this, the, the video was also performed also by um, we had an audition for Candido Padilla. We have Noel Crucio. Uh, he, he would trace the, his ancestors to have fought against the Japanese also. So we have this song, Gugmang Gihandum, inspired by the, 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 the story of, of couple Juliana Revilles with her husband, Candido Padilla, who was also a Katipunero. So this is not everything is according to history or to, to facts, but this is the essence in this song, Gugmang Gihando. So we would like to show you this video. That is, you can also view this at Palm Grass, the Cebu Heritage Hotel YouTube account. So this is Gugmang Gihando. Look, 
Daghang salamat for that video. So we thank our video creator, uh, Prospero Lapot of Social Communications Asia. Also our script writer, Giselle Marie Suarez. Also, she was an intern at that time from GS from the U University of the Philippines, Cebu Mass Communications, um, MassCom. And also the words were written by Agrippina, uh, that's me. And the words uh, and the, the music by Jeff Escarda. So, we thank all the performers of that video to also the inspired that video, the story inspired by Juliana Rivillas. So we thank uh, the, the the beautiful words from Angie Carballo from from the National Centennial Committee page who said 
um, sana po makapag-download ng music video, napakaganda po. Mapan um, I, she wanted her students to be able to watch the video. So it is at our Palm, uh, Palm Grass de Cebu Heritage Hotel playlist of the Abdik Paskilat songs. Uh, we have an Abdik Paskilat album and uh, it is in, in the Palm Grass de Cebu Heritage Hotel YouTube account. So, um, daghang salamat for to to um, everyone who is with us, and we we have two more questions for for uh, one more question for Dr. Rose and two more questions for Dr. Deray. Then we will have a trivia quiz. We will have the 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 cosplay contest, and our judges will also still be our panelists. And we have one more judge from our audience. So so we have we have this um, we have so uh, Angie. Please go to uh, later to the YouTube account of Palm Grass of Cebu Heritage Hotel. We have playlist there and the album of Tik Paskilat. So we have actually an album of songs, songs on 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 love, war, and history. So so there. Is, this is a question for Dr. Rose. What were the Dr. Rose? What were the contribution of the women um, in the struggle for liberation and the categories? according to their contribution okay so i think i have listed down my answer now. before i you know i would like first to remind everybody why is it why do we adore these women because they dared to defy the cause they pursued work beyond the homes they fought for our political rights and they broke the culture of science so this is in praise for the women whom i just mentioned okay so the question is, uh, let's go back now to the next. Did I write, did I have a slide for that? Uh, no, this is your last slide. <laughs> so oh. uh, you, you will not. Uh, sorry, there's no, no slide. slide for, no, yes, no, there's no so slide. In terms of, if you will look at it in terms of contribution, generally they, they, they contributed more for what you call medical, generally, you know, medical care because education, because that is what women's work is defined. But at the same time, you can see that they went beyond this kind of contribution by doing into men's area, which is also fighting, at the same time organizing and going into institution building. So in general, you can see that there is not much difference now about the men and women in the modern times. No? Because what men can do, women can. And what women can do, also men can. Because men are into the nursing. They're also into education now. The same thing also with the women who are into their fields. So I'm, I'm glad that at least there is not, there's a little gap now in terms of what you call stereotyping of men's and women's contribution. Probably that's the most that I can say now. Daghang salamat, uh, Dr. Rose. Now we would like to ask also Dr. Duray regarding uh, to discuss, uh, Dr. Duray, to discuss the documented Visayan women in the struggle for national freedom and democracy. Uh, you're referring to the contemporary, to contemporary women. period, yes. I think uh, the Cebuano women like their counterparts in other country in the post-independence period of our history, temporary period are very empowered women, very empowered. They have risen from the Babaylan spirit and now they are moving the presidency of the country. So we have made uh, inroads in the the Filipino women, as mentioned by Rose earlier, they have broken the culture of silence. They have broken the glass ceilings. They are now in various fields, very articulate. They're also part of the transformation of our country. Slowly, they are now into politics and hopefully um, could make a significant, um, what we call victor election. I'm showing my, my standpoint. And uh, so that's how the Filipinas are. And as a matter of fact, today the Filipinas, not only the Cebuanas, 
have made a mark globally in shaping the global agenda for empowerment and sustainable development. And at the local level, we have very active women in the NGOs of the Visayas, particularly Cebu. Cebu has a very rich civil society, very strong civil society organizations. And a lot of the women together with the men are doing their share in coming up with affirmative politics that we need today. A kind of politics personally oriented, that is politics that is based on issues, the issues of elite dominance, the issues of poverty, the issue of lack of food security, the issue of graft and corruption. Our women, our Cebuano women, together with the other women in this country, are in issues and very much engaged. So, uh, so we have to write their stories in, I think, since I have another appointment, we have to write the stories of the world. And I'm challenging our men also as they construct their stories, write their memoirs, uh, pay attention to, to the role of women in your stories and to the educators here, help reconstruct a social history where not only the elite's stories are heard, but stories of the marginalized, the women and the other sectors of our the indigenous women, the Moro women, who are playing very important in bringing about an inclusive society in the Philippines, a society where there is sustainable futures for everyone. And I think with that note, may I be excused already? Uh, <laughs> so, dagang salamat, Dr. Duray. We're so happy. It's our pleasure to hear your words and to to hear your knowledge and your challenge for everyone regarding the advocacy for women because the women's advocacy is of course part of the advocacy for for the betterment of all peoples in the world nagang salamat dr Durai. so we Thank hope to you. see you again next time so you will not be able to judge anymore so we have dr rose who will stay to judge our bisayan women warrior contest and also we have also an on-site judge here nagang salamat dr Dr. Duray, maayong hapon. Thank you, Rose, because Rose has uh, a lot of data. They are, they are more advanced in UPV in terms of star studies on women, and hopefully the young scholars of Cebu uh, will add more stories and fill in the gaps in a reconstruction of history and coming up with a history of women in this particular part of the country. Dagang salamat. Maraming. Dagang salamat, Dr. Duray. So now we would like to give you, we, we are preparing, so our our cosplayers are now preparing their uh, their um, their um, modeling of their, their costumes. So while we are waiting for them to prepare, we would like to, sh to invite you to, to go to our YouTube account again later to watch this song and to to view this song and share this song and we have this post at the Palmgrass the Cebu Heritage Facebook page regarding the if you are able to share this song when this song reaches 1 million views they, they are this is now this has now 998,000 views only 2000 more so help us reach this um reach 1 million views for this song this is a song inviting people to to come with us kuyugiko going back to our history and this has now 998,000 views at youtube kuyugiko so we will we will we will come uh, we will help reach 1 million views for this and then you will be you screenshot your sharing and your like and then you you will post it at the comment section of that post you will pin it we will pin that post later regarding the the uh, uh if you have shared this video then we will have you will be able to be part of the raffle and there will be exciting prices like an overnight stay at pam grass the Cebu heritage hotel at our rooms for heroes so this is the song so stay tuned for the trivia quiz and the cosplay contest so we have this song, Kuyugiko. <laughs>
Salamat, a round of applause for that song that is now that has now 998,000 views. And so we would like to have uh, to shout to recognize our uh, uh, audience, our from uh, from Sherry de la Frontera. Shout out for Oprah Elementary School teachers. So our teachers are here for a comic training. So we have we are. We are, we we are very happy that we are they are training for this very important exercise a political electoral exercise that would be a really has a in fact a very big factor in the development of our country and our nation so thank you teachers for your hard work in your training so <laughs> so so um so also to we would like to recognize the uh, Francis um, for the Kulturang Sugbuanon, Winnie Frida Raro at the National Quincentennial Committee page. Good afternoon. So now, uh, are you ready for our cosplayers, the Visayan Women Warriors? We have our Visayan Women Warriors uh, contest, cosplay contest. Do we have our contestant number one? we have our contestant number two so our so they will be explaining their they would be telling us about their character briefly and then uh, we would ask the the judges to may we have the judges uh, we will have the judges ask a question can you have uh can you have a mic for microphone for your gracias uh so if you cannot see your gracias so we can we can have 
him his audio only if there's no other another there, there is no other camera do you have a mic for our one another microphone for for geographias so geographias mm -hmm. is a as a development communication student from the Cebu Technological University, and he would be helping us judge this cosplay contest. So he is the representative from the millennials in this. He has he has also advocacy for women. So and then so we have our so we have our con cosplayer number two. We start with our cosplayer number two. So we have Charlene. Player number two for Teresa Magbanwa. Ah, uh, Teresa Magbanwa. Close up. Can you close, zoom in for the. Mayong hapun sa tanan. Ako si Teresa Magbanua, ang hinirala sa Panay. Ako ang isa hinirala sa Iloilo. Nangulo ako sa gera sa sa kapsila hapon og mga Amerikano. Kun perdihon ang akong mga kontra. So daghang daghang salamat, uh, daghang salamat um uh, this is Charlene our our cosplayer number two so uh the cos cosplayer number one did not uh is not here so uh, no one number two so um Dr. Rose, do you have a may we ask for a question for you uh, from you for uh our cosplayer number two um Charlie, who is uh who is her, her character is teresa magpanua question yes your question for our cosplayer question. By the way, she was also listening during my ano, during my my talk. She was here if she listened. <laughs> uh, because I will base my question. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the what is the major cause why Teresa Magbanwa joined the fighting against the Japanese? So uh, so the, now uh, so you can answer because she is Cebuana, so she cannot speak oh. in, in Hiligaynon. So I it's guess okay, um, Charlene I can, 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 I can uh, uh, answer in answer in in Cebuano. So the the question is nga no kono nga ni appeal si Teresa Magbanwa sa pakigaway batok sa mga hapon. So why did Teresa Magbanwa join the fight against the Japanese? Ikaw Teresa, so ikaw si Teresa nga no ni appeal ka. Why did you join the 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 fight against the Japanese? Okay, may hapun sa tanan. Akas ako na si Teresa Magbanwa as a character. Ni appeal ko sa pag ni appeal ko sa gubat o pagera sa mga mga Japan para ibarug ang mga Ibarug sa katauhan na ang mga babae kay mo mo stand as a warrior. Daghang salamat, Charlene, cosplayer number two. Daghang salamat. Teresa Magbanwa, generala sa Panay. So that's um Charlene, cosplayer number two. We have cosplayer number three. We have music. So we have um Shari Babaylan. Cosplayer number three, Shari. Close up. May hapon sa tanan. Ako ang namulo, namulo sa ritual o pagbuhat sa mga tambal o gilo. Aron mapildi ang mga kontra. Daghang salam. So, uh, daghang salamat, uh, Shari. We have a question. Uh, there is a question from our invisible judge, Joe Gracias, from CTU. He is a co college student from the Cebu Technological University. We have a question from Joe Gracias for Babaylan. Babaylan, Shari. So, what's the question? Hello, hi. Uh, uh, right. Hi, sir. Yes. May hapon. May hapon, sir. All right. So, kung sa umo ni mo pagdasig ang mga kababayin an karon nga mamahimong maayong ehemplo, bisan pa man sa ka, uh, kangit-ngit sa atong gagahapon, nga uh, labi na sa itong history 
few na lang yung mag-go. Alright, so kung so, saan mo yung pagdasig, ang mga bagong kababayinan, aron na himong maayong panigingnan sa ato ang katilingban karon. So, uh, Dagay, salamat, Joe Gracias, for those who can't understand Cebuano. So, Joe Gracias was asking, Babay Lan Shari, how can the women today be, how can you encourage women today to be good role models for society? So, unsay sa bag ni Babay Lan Shari. Salamat sa ako ng nindot nga pangutana, sir. Ang para na po, sir, kanang idasig na ko ang mga babae nga. Dili ta magpapildi sa mga laki. Kung unsa man ang mabuhat nila, kaya no na to sa mga babae. Daghang salamat. <laughs> so, daghang salamat to Babay Lan Shari. Shari was saying, so she is having a ritual of offering flowers to the salt water pool at the gummy. So, <laughs> so her, he, she said that um, uh, she would encourage all women to to show to the men that they can do what women what men can do so that's what he said so everything that the men can Hello? do the women can also do so um can we have so um so now we have our contestant number number four so we have our con cosplayer number four, and we have uh, Maria Fe playing the character of Juliana Catiponera, Juliana Rivillas. So this is Maria Fe, con cosplayer number four. Maying hapon sa tanan, ako si Juliana Reveles, ang katoponera sa Dulho. Isip sa pagkapin sa revolusyon sa Cebu, no, 18,098. Ang akong bana si Candido Padilio, Padilia, bisan pa man namatay siya, nagpadayon ako sa pagbatok sa katoponera. Salamat. Daghang salamat, Juliana. So, nagpadayon siya. So, she continued to fight against... Ag against, sige. O sa to, Juliana? May hapon sa tanan. Ako si Juliana Rebellious. Apil ako sa revolusyon. 18,098. Ang akong ba na si Candido... Candido... Candido Padilla. Ap, bisan pa man na matay siya, padayon ako sa pagbatok, pagbatok sa ka, isip kat, katipunera. Oh. Daghang salamat, Daghang salamat. <laughs> Juliana, sa imong take two. So she said that even if her, she is a katipunera from Dulho, and even if her husband, yes, katipunero, yeah. Candido Padilla, died or was killed, she continued to fight. And uh, da daghang salamat, Juliana. So next, we have our cosplayer number. Uh, uh, do we have a? You have a question from. The, we have a question from Doctor Rose for uh, Katipunera Juliana Maria Fe. So Doctor Rose, what's your question for her? Uh, why? No, no. To what? To what socioeconomic class? Did uh, Katipunera Rebellia come from? Dagang uh, salamat, Dr. Rose. So, uh, nangutana si, si Dr. Rose kung unsa nga uh, socio-economic class, unsa iyang, iyang, iyang economic situation ni eh, Juliana. Isip, Juan, ma'am. <laughs> Ikaw si Juliana. Ah, uh, yes, ma'am. Isip, ako si Juliana. Ang iyang ipakita nga uh, Katipunera, isip, inahan sa kanang kwan ma'am isip inahan sa bayan ma'am nagan salamat unsa iyang unsa iyang situation economically kwan ma'am kanang nag nagsakop ma'am nagsakop sa kwan sa bayan nagsakop Daghang sa bayan nagan salamat Juliana so we have uh, that's cosplayer number 4 Maria Fe we have now cosplayer number five. 
uh, Mabel playing the character of Amaya. So this is a pre-colonial character. Mayong hapon sa tanan. Kini day si Amaya kay gikan sa Osaka. Epic nga series. Uh, this is a fictional character. Uh, si Amaya Osaka binokot na himo pag siyang ulipon na himo pag siya o uh, babaylan o uh, Osaka warrior. Salamat. Tadaghang salamat, Mabel, uh, playing the, the character of Amaya. So, there is a question from our... One of our judges, uh, Jograshas, what's your question for Mabel? Who is, she said she is a, uh, her character is Amaya, a Binukot woman from the Visayas, who is, who became also a, uh, a slave and became um, a Babaylan. So what's your question for her? Hello. Hello. Oh, yeah. How are you going to encourage the new women of the day? to be of themselves, especially that being under the pandemic situation, many are uh, has deprived their confidence and of course they lack self-esteem and you being the model of strength and you know, the energy and uh, having the, the power to defend the nation how are you going to encourage the new women of the day to be like yours? Pwede na magbisaya sa so first time English or Tagalog, on Sarah. So, so uh, Amaya, unsa imong answer? What's your answer to the question of Judge Jugracias of how can you be a... How, how are you going to encourage, encourage or like to replicate your energy to the new woman of today? New how, can the, how can the youth of today, the women of today, the young women of today be as strong as you, Amaya? Yeah. Sige. Isip, isip o sa kababay, ang una yun nga yung buhaton kay before siya mo higugma og lain dili higugma nga about sa relationship ah higugma sa usa ka tawo isip usa ka tawo inana dapat iyang higugma on una ang iyang kaugalingon iyang ilahon before siya mo before siya mo invest og lain lain nga tawo pamilya og bisag unsa pa mao ra gina ko master love yourself daghang salamat so uh, cosplayer uh, amaya says that uh, to be able to you should love yourself first before you be, you will be able to love others so the first thing is to really love to love yourself before you extend you you can give love to others by loving yourself first so that's that's um that's the answer of cosplayer mabel playing the character of amaya now we have cosplayer number six we have lenji playing the character of Biniaan. Bibiaan ni siya. <laughs> Lenji, kisa'y nagbiya ni mo. <laughs> kisa, kay atong katunggok doon nagsundang ang nagbiya. So, we have Lenji Biniaan. Mayong hapon, kaninyong tanan. Ako din si Biniaan. O saka fictional character from the, from the TV series Amaya. Usa ko ka prinsesa nga nahimong warrior. So, daghang salamat. So, si Lenji says her character is from also from the TV series. She is a princess who became a warrior. So, do we have a question? We have a question from our judge, um, Dr. Rose, uh, for, for Lenji. So, for uh, Biniaan. Biniaan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a mute. Biniaan. So she's a princess who ah. became a warrior. Her character is a, a a fictional character, a princess, a Visayan princess who became a warrior. Um, is she, is is being a, is being a warrior an answer for a woman who has lost love? <laughs> so I'm question. Is being a warrior an answer for a woman who has lost her love? Her love or love or love? 
<laughs> is being a warrior the answer. So ang pagka manggugubat ba, ang pagpakigaway ba, ang tubag, kung bibiyaan ka or if she lost, if you lost his love, <laughs> if you lost your love or your loved one, if you lost him, uh, yes. would being a warrior be the answer? The answer. Um, no? Kung gibiyaan okay, ka, I can understand. Oh, she can understand. She was here in she stayed in Cebu for many years. Yes. For, for one year. Sige, one year, uh, four months. Pinayaan, prin, princess pinayaan on sa ito bag mo. Kung ang pagkawala sa akong hinigugma kay ang rason kay war rasad, if ang like ang solusyon na lang yun nga, mabawi na ko ang grief sa iyang pagkawala kay mahimo kong usa ka warrior, then I will do my best nga protektahan o buhaton ang tanan makamit ang iyang pagkawala o mawala ang kaguol sa kong dughan. Dagang salamat. Dagang salamat. So, Lenji Biniaan says that if fighting is the only way to to get over her grief, to continue the war, if if she lost him because of the war, so she would continue fighting to 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 comfort him herself. So may we have all our cosplayers. Cosplayer number two, Teresa Magbanwa. So we have cosplayer number three, Shari Dababailan. So we have cosplayer number number uh, four, Maria Fe Juliana Rivillas. We have cosplayer number five, Mabel, playing uh, the character of Amaya. And we have cosplayer number six, Lenji, playing the character of Biniaan. So you would be watching them so you can type your uh, comments on who is your favorite cosplayer right now. If it's cosplayer number two, number three, is it Teresa Magpanwa, Babaylan, Juliana, Amaya or Biniaan. So while the judge is um uh, the, the judges are 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 making their evaluation, we are now going to have a trivia quiz. So you can still see them, watch them. So So um so we will now have a trivia quiz uh, for for those online and on site. So our we are waiting for the decision of our judges. So now we would like to have a treat for all our on-site audience. So all our on-site audience, they will have a chance to win a prize like the cake and smoothie of the month named Kuyugiko. So we have this blue, blueberry cake, uh, blueberry and cream cake with a smoothie. Um, and then, uh, so this is our cake of the month. So it's very yummy. So lami kayo ning a cake. So, uh, so if flex nato, we will flex our kuyugi 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 ko cake. So um, kuyugi ko sa pagkaon aning a cake. So uh, come with me in um, uh, taste uh, having a uh, uh, in having uh, this cake of the month. So, uh, can you? Uh, do you have my audio? Okay, ra, ang audio. So, um, we would like to have you answer this question, and and the one who would be able. So, this is for the on-site audience. So, our next, our second question is for those online. So, all those online would be answering the second question. For this first question, we would like to ask you to raise your hand. If you want to answer, and then you go to that microphone and give your answer. And of course, you will be able to answer this if you listen to our, the sharing of our panelists. So, so this is, this, you should be able to, to, to eat this, uh, to have a taste of this blueberry cake and cream cake. So the question is this. So... This is the question. What is the Nomdiger? So the, the, the name or the name during the war. The Nomdiger of Panay resistance fighter, Coronation Shiva, who joined the hook to fight against the Japanese occupation. She, she, she joined the hook and she fought even until the martial law. 
So now, who would like to answer this question? So the one who would answer the question, what is her nom de guerre? So what is her? She was Commander Blanc. So who, who wants to answer? Who, the one who would like to answer would go. So they are still taking a photo shoot. So the, our teachers are taking photo shoot with our Visayan warrior, women warriors. No one wants to answer. So who wants, who wants to answer? The, the name of, what was the name? Commander Blanc. Is the name of Coronation Shiva. She, she of Panay. She joined. She joined the 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 hook. Uh, who who Commander Blanc? What is her name? So who who wants to answer? You go to the microphone and answer. She was Commander Blanc. So what's the Blanc? So what's her name? And you would be able to have a taste of our our Kuyugi cake. So made of blueberry. No one can answer. So, so some, someone will answer. Commander Blanc. What's her? I have, I will, I will give you a clue, Arun Sayunra. It is a name of a forest flower. Oh, yes. What's the name? What's the name? Commander Blanc. Teresa Magbanwa. Ink. <laughs> so Teresa Magbanua, that's her name, Teresa Magbanua. So Koreshon Sheba Shiva also has she has a name for the war, a nom de guerre. She was Commander Blanc, and her name her name is a name of a flower. So uh Sige, let's have you gracious be at at to sahan. So the answer is, can we have it? Uh, can we have the answer? Oh. The answer. So, you know, faster, okay, we're, it's getting dark. So the, what's your answer? Was it Walling Walling? Answer? Walling Walling. Congratulations. You get the correct answer. So we, our, our, our commander from Panay who joined the, the fight against the Japanese is Commander Waling Waling. So she is Coronation Shiva and she fought until against the martial law. So we have our second question. So, so we have our second question for those online. So when you come to Cebu and come to Palm Grash, you will be able to win this, this Maanyag cocktail. So this is made of tuba, lime, and ube. This lami ni siya. Ako ang ibdon. Mahubog niya ako. <laughs> so those online, so those on site cannot answer, and those online would be answering. This, the third question is for everyone on site and online, but you would all answer through the comment section of uh, of the of this event. So our 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 second question on, only for those online so those i am only looking at the page of palm grass cb heritage hotel and also of the um quincentennial national quincentennial committee page so um this is the maanyag beautiful beautiful cocktail so the the cebuano word for beautiful is maanyag lovely so the lovely women are those who are courageous fierce determined and who fight for the rights of the people so this is maanyag as as yummy and as strong as this cocktail the women are as strong and as yummy as this maanyag cocktail so the question is this so you those online would answer you answer through the comment section we've been talking about this car this this katipunera the whole afternoon so the question is this what is the name of the cebuana katipunera from dulho who was active in the planning of the 1898 cebu revolution she was one of the few women so you answer so the ones on site cannot answer only those online will answer so so those online would answer so what's your answer so i am looking at the at the National Quincentennial Committee page and also uh, at the 
at the um, Palmgrass de Cebu Heritage Hotel page. So, who answers? Who, what is your answer? She is the wife of Katipunero Candido Padilla. One of our cosplayers have her character. Grabe sa'yo, nakaayo nino. So, uh, who wants to answer? So, it's from the NQC page. I have, I'm logging actually at the, at the NQC page. I may, I may not be able to, to see. So, we have, di ba sige naman Troy. Troy is the first one to answer. <laughs> si Troy? Sige na. Okay na si Troy. Congratulations, Troy. You get a maanyag cocktail made of tuba lime. So tuba is a drink in the Visaya since 1,000 years or more ago. So tuba, lime, and ube. Lami ni siya. Isog sad. So now we have our, our next, our next um, question, our third question. We have our number three question. Pwede ko aunin kay drink. So, our number three question. Uh, we have our number three question. We have our trivia quiz number three. And the prize is a five-hour stay at our Rooms for Heroes. And also, um, and also a, a uh, uh, you can also avail, you have access to the salt water dipping pool at the back of our Women Warriors. So soak and chill at our room, our, our salt water dipping pool at Hardin Dagami, and also a five-hour stay at our rooms for heroes. So this is the question. Everyone will answer through the comment section. So everyone on site and online can answer this question. So those uh, so those who would like to answer, you answer at the comment section of the Facebook page of either the National Quincentennial Committee page or the Facebook page of Pam Grass the Cebu Heritage Hotel. So this is the question. What is the name of the Generala of Panay who led battles since the anti-Spanish revolution until the Japanese occupation? Of course, everyone knows the answer. So what's the answer? So the first one to type the answer, the correct answer, would be able to win the prize. So, did you gracious already win? So, the one who already won can no longer have this, this chance. So, so we have... No, did na human na siya, did daog na siya, waling-waling yung answer ganina. So, who else would be able to... Uh, to who, who else has the correct answer? So we have another who answered. So we have Cedric. Is is he the, the next the next one or John Austria from the NQC page? Who was the first? So huh? Cedric. Uh, thank you for the answers, John Austria and Angie Carvalho. The first to answer after you gracias was Teresa uh, was Cedric Campilio. So Cedric, from where are you? Are you from Cebu or from other parts of the country or the world? So congratulations, Cedric, for winning the Soak and Chill five hours stay at our Rooms for Heroes and, and also a, 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 an access to our saltwater dipping pool at Hardin Dagami. Congratulations for listening and for, for knowing the answer of, and for being proud of our Generala sa Panay, Teresa Magpanwa. And now, so we, we would like to to show you again our our warriors our visayan women warriors we have uh, uh, uh we have our cosplayer number two charlene for teresa magbanwa asa si so you you show your to the camera you show your you show your <laughs> you show you show your post to the camera next we have um uh babaylan shari na cosplayer number three so, and then so we have uh, next our cosplayer number number four, Juliana Maria Fe. And then we have our cosplayer number five, Mabel for Amaya. And then we have our cosplayer number six, Lenji for Biniaan. So do we have the result? So, 
So we have uh, we have our our we have our consolation prize winners. We have consolation prize winners. We have um, as con we have the remaining would be the top two. So for the consolation prize winners, we have contestant number two, Teresa, and then we have contestant number four, Juliana for consolation prize, and we have contest contestant number six, Biniyaan for for consolation prize. Congratulations to the consolation prize winners. We have our top two, our finalist con contestant. Number three and contestant num contestant number co cosplayer number three Babaylan and cosplayer number five Amaya. So we have the two remaining, the top two cosplayer number three Babaylan and cosplayer number number five Amaya. Naaragya pun sa side ang uban. So natay music. <laughs> so our cosplayer number number our our contest cosplayer so for those on online who is your bet so who do you want to win so who is your wh whom do you vote to be the Visayan women woman warrior of 2022 ang ang babaying manggugubat 2022 our babaying manggugupa 2022 is Insay Lyndon Johnson wants to win ay ayaw ako panalunin it's okay <laughs> next time better luck next time Lyndon for the trivia quiz our babaying manggugupa 2022 is cosplayer number cosplayer number Number five, <laughs> Amaya. Congratulations! So you win a what? What does she win? She she win an over overnight stay at Palmgrass, the Cebu Heritage Hotel. So she wins an uh, uh, um, an overnight stay at Palmgrass, the Cebu Heritage Hotel. And uh, we have her. We, we she will be crowned as the she has her shield. And, and the sash of babaying manggugubat. Babay na siya. Babaying manggugubat. So, the shield. So, ang shield nila ihatag. So, we have... So, money siya yung prize, ang, ang shield. So, she, she gets a shield. <laughs> so, congratulations. So, now we would like to invite you to our next Next uh, events on March 12th, uh, I'm uh, on March 19th, uh, next Saturday, we will have an impromptu speech contest for the grade school, grades 7 to 12 students and the 500 years of Visayan heroism. Do uh, can all the, the other uh, warriors, the cosplayers, also post there with with uh, uh, with, uh, with the winner? You will also post with them, and then we will also have our our April 3 event um, to celebrate the 124th year of the Battle of Church de Abril. And also on April 27, it is the, the celebration of the 500 year first victory at Mactan. And we will have a, a heritage adventure trail for this. And we will have a raffle draw of who can join this heritage, a free heritage adventure trail at Palmgrass. You will, you will learn traditional Visayan and Cebuano chores and way of life and also dance, music, traditionally make puso, dance the tinikling and also um, play the kulintang, magkagud, uh, maglubok on this uh, uh, April 27. There will be a raffle draw on April 3 for this and also join us in our next um, uh, event. On April 2030, celebrating the 501st anniversary of the Battle of Mactan with the legendary, the legends of Lapu-Lapu. We will also be showing a video during that time. And also on, on April 3, Dr. Michael Colonnane will be with us. Uh, who, he wrote the Ang Mga Manggugubot sa Kagubot sa Subbo. 
So we would like to ask our uh, panelist, Dr. Rose Asam, for her closing words for this event. Okay. <clears throat> uh, again, I would like to thank you for the opportunity our Panay women's achievements to slowly unveil their contribution to history and her story. Uh, I hope that uh, there will be further studies on on this because it seems that uh, there is still a lack of uh, studies to, to the importance of women in uh, civilization history and their contribution in terms of nation building. I hope that uh, its region will come up with on women, no? probably could uh, spearhead that to reinforce the, their contributions to be models to the future generation. And of course, again, happy Women's Month. I also say that I admire your advocacy of preserving and popularizing uh, design history and culture. Daghang salamat, Dr. Rose. May you show again our Visayan Women Warriors cosplayers? So what can you say to them also, Dr. Rose, uh, regard our women who are playing characters in Visayan history? I'm, and you know, I'm glad that you have this kind of, co co no, how do you say, cosplay? Because what I understand by cosplay is those mga anime characters. So that's why I'm surprised that it can also be like this, no, instead of those... Uh, of those other forms, no. I'm glad that uh, I I know I can recognize some of them. We Amaya is the character of Miriam, ano, Marian Rivera, no. I remember that was in television, and then of course, uh, yeah. Actually, I said sa Teresa Magbanwa, your costume is okay because you have the patadjong and then the rifle, etc. No, and then but congratulations no, for the effort. And I, I agree now that uh, number one, ang, si, si, ano, si Amaya, because you have all the all the paraphernalia you know, to go with the costume. Congratulations. Daghang salamat, Dr. Rose. Daghang salamat mm -hmm. to our cosplayers, the very brave women warriors yes. of Cebu, I, the Cebu youth, the young women uh, who are playing the characters of the Visayan. Visayan warriors. Thank you to our audience online and on site. Congratulations to the trivia quiz winners. Be with us again in our next event. Dagang salamat our partners, the National Historical Commission, the Philippines, mm -hmm. the National Pencentennial Committee, Museum Subbu, Central Visayas Association of Museums, the Andy Heritage Center, so and 2020. Dagang salamat and happy National Women's Month. Manipayong pagsaulog sa buwan sa mga kababayinan and we wish for a future where all the women, the peasants, the, the workers, uh, yes. the urban poor, the indigenous women will all be happy during this month. Daghang salamat, Ugmay Gabi. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.